You are listening to a Chatter Fact. Again, these are not interviews, they're conversations, and I'm, you're here. Hi. Hi. We have Sarah Moore uh, with us today, ladies and gentlemen, whoever's listening. Um, and this is great because you're like, you're doing it. I'm, I'm, I've known you for a long time. It's been like, yeah, like over a decade. I was I wondering, like, was it after, because you went to school with my brother Paul. No, my husband went to school. Oh, I thought Paul. you went to school with all those guys. I did not. Oh, okay. Um, but I. Where'd you go to school then? I went to high school in Griffith. Oh, okay. Griffith, Indiana. For... Correct. <laughs> um, tiny, tiny Griffith, Indiana. Yeah. Um, and uh, met my husband when I was a junior in college. I came home. Such a strange story. Uh, I was studying in London. Oh. And I had three or four weeks off between um, studying in London and then I went back to work in Ireland for two months. I worked in a black box theater um, in downtown Dublin, which was wonderful. Wow. Super fun. Wow. Um, That's cool. But I was home for about three weeks and while I was here, <laughs> I said I would stage Fall manage. In love? I said I would stage manage a show. Oh. <laughs> and and during the course of that, uh, I met Jeff, who became my husband, uh, and we sort of did like the little flirty, like, oh, you're really great. And then I was like, cool, I'm going to Ireland. <laughs> I'll catch you later. Um, oh, no. And uh, I thought that was nice, but you know, that's probably not an, nothing's going to come from that. But I landed at Heathrow Airport, and before I made my connecting flight, I checked my email. Um, to, and sent all the messages home that was like, hey, I'm, I'm here and I'm safe and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I had an email from him and sort of the rest is history. He picked me up from the airport when I got home after those couple months. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we... Kept the fire burning. Yeah. Was it, were you just constantly emailing back we, and forth? We emailed it- a lot and we... Um, I would get up early before work, and he would stay up late, and we would oh in, my god, this instant is like message. A romantic, oh uh, yeah, over the internet, and then we we did some phone calls because I would um, I would get like a certain amount of like international minutes, and I would call him. And Whenever you're chat. out of like cool geeky stuff to do, you guys will have to do your Hallmark yeah. like, movie. The because I'm talking to a geek. I'm, super this is, geek. This is this is so. There's so many reasons why I'm happy to talk to you today. Because for one, well, for one thing, it's it's all about progress and and just about what people do and how they handle their their stuff. And the fact that you are like this, you'd mentioned on the phone. You know, we talked whatever we talked for our two minutes yesterday, and you said something like you know steady crawl or steady pace, and mm-hmm. you know slow and steady. Yeah. I think is what you yeah, said. Yeah, slow and it, steady. People, what what is the name of the web of web series? Uh, my web series is called Gamer Chain. Okay, so folks, this is really cool, and w- this is what I love about you and about Jeff. Um, you guys start this gamer chick thing because you are a huge. You're you're a gamer chick. Like in reality, I, I you am. are, yeah. right? So you brought that to your show, and we'll get into all that stuff. You okay. Know? I'm just, I, I, I want to like really talk about, you know, why you're here because I've noticed people tell me how much the, you know, within the first ten minutes of listening, they're googling and everything, you know. So it's really cool. Awesome. Yeah. But anyway, so you're you're doing your show, which you write, and you guys write and then direct and produce the whole thing. Yeah. True gamer geek show, which is great. And it's a lot of fun. And what I like about it is like you, it's 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 you in general, and we'll get into like the finer points of this because this is this is going to be great for the the, the artists that are listening who want to who just don't feel like it's working out, or maybe they're auditioning for whatever Chicago Fire, or whatever mm-hmm. they're doing, and and maybe some of it's happening, maybe some of it's not. There's something about just you know if you can't be in the show, you make the show, and yeah. the things that you've done to slowly and steadily create this like fan base and I've seen it you know because I, I, you know, I keep tabs on you and yeah. I can see how suddenly you're you're appearing at different comic cons or gen cons and suddenly you're getting these small indie movie roles yeah. and I, just the attention that the show gets and the things that have happened for you because of the show and the way you push you're really good you're not overbearing you like put your stuff out there and it's a consistent consistent kind of push of this is what I'm doing right. it's not even necessarily this is who I am this is what I'm doing because a lot of people are just well look at me look at me but mm-hmm. you're 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 more about look at what I'm doing and you do it in the right way and uh, people need to realize too and people who do what we do yeah you know um 
I had mentioned this talking to somebody on one of the earlier podcasts. There's no team. We're the team. Right. You know, do you, I don't know if you ever run into, you know, the, the negativity of like, oh, she's probably so full of herself. It's like, no, I have to do this or there's no other way that you're going to know that I'm doing it. And not only that, if I don't do it, nobody else will. So if, if you're my friend, don't judge. Do it. Just, do, do it for yeah. me. Why don't well, you do it? That, you know, and so I think it's, it's not just know. like, I don't know that I run into you're so full of yourself. I run into um, that can't be possibly who you are. Oh. <laughs> I get that The disbelief. More. Yeah, right? I get because like... Yeah. And it's interesting because I've, I've had it where I've gone into comic shops and like, I know more about comics than my husband does. Like, I'm the one that likes comics. Oh my God, in our we're house. totally geeking out. This is going to be like the best podcast <laughs> yes! ever because we're, we're, we're going to get into you and we're going to geek out uh, like about everything. Yeah. Marvel movies are coming out. Oh stuff man, I'm so about. excited about that. Oh, good. Right. Um, but, but, anyway. uh, but I've gone into comic shops and had them blatantly say to me like, oh, are you here to pick up something for your boyfriend? <sighs> Like, why is that the first thing out of your mouth? And every time I do like a panel or something about Gamer Chick, the first yeah. question I always get, and it is always from a dude, <laughs> is, so do you actually game? Oh my God. And I'm like, I don't feel like I need to like justify my nerd cred to you. You know, like, you know what though? But here's the thing. You're an actress. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, how many times do we see somebody in a comic book movie and, you know, oh, but I've never read the source material, which actually annoys the crap out of me. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, shit, yeah. what are you, you know? Yeah. Well, so so I, there's but, something to be said but for I'm that. But you know? I'm, I'm often on the panels not as an actress, as show creator, because yeah, I write it. See. I write it and produce it yeah. and act in it. But and again, so. I mean, I think even, you know, I don't even think Christopher Nolan was like too much into, or, or think of like the early Michael Keaton Batmans. You know, Michael I, Keaton will always be my Batman. You know what? He is the, yeah. I love yeah. him. Well, he never did the, where's the trigger? <laughs> the no, voice. I feel like they're just going to like, he, I, f- I want to just give him like throat coat tea. That, like, did all you the ever time. see, it's college, I think it's called College Humor on YouTube. And this guy nails the bat. People like is he is every, he bat dad? Is that that one? He's have bat, you seen I think bat they call dad? it bad man. Oh bad. But man. everybody, if all right, everyone, if you want, you can even pause the episode. Get on YouTube. <laughs> the first one I saw, somebody sent me Batman can't stop talking about sex. <laughs> and it's the scene where uh, he finally beats Bane. Spoiler alert, I guess, but come on. Where you know, yeah. he, he, he beats Bane down and whatever, the girl ends up being the bad guy and she stabs him or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he's like, where's the trigger? For one thing, like best Batman impression ever. Ever, nice. right? And it and they play out the scene very similar to the scene. It, it looks dark. It looks real. The costumes look good and everything. Bane has that that voice that weird and all. Oh, you know? mm-hmm. But he's doing the voice like to a T. And then at, you know he gets stabbed by the girl. And then he looks back and the, the score is sweltering. And then all of a sudden he stops and he's like, "What?" But we totally did it. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> they're like, we have the trigger. We're blowing up Gotham. But this guy can't. Is, he's just talking about the fact that they screwed. And that's, that's the whole thing, you know. It's but perfect. his impression is so good. And it got so popular on YouTube that now there's like five of them. Including one where it's how he found his voice, where he like grabs, it's like Batman Day One, and he grabs a bad guy and he's hanging him out, you know, off of like a ledge, <laughs> you know, and he's like, "All right, now you're, you know, you're, you've been a bad guy," and the guy's like, "Whoa, I'm not, I don't feel fear at all." That's not scary. And he goes through like, you know, Al Pacino, <laughs> like he just goes through a million voices, and finally he's like, oh, "Okay, wait, wait a minute," and the guy's like, "Oh, hey, that, that's good." He's like, "No, I just, I just lost my voice." <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's good. But anyway, I, I hated the Batman voice. I love the movies were good, but I didn't like the Batman voice. I like the world that they created. Yeah, of them being really like gritty and lived in. Let's and, talk about yeah. the fact that if you watch a, a decent, I don't know, a decent TV show with great fast moving fight scenes, the fight scenes are really cool. Yeah. But how about the fact that like the Batman in comic books, he's like the best fighter in the world. Yeah, he's, he's a ninja. Yeah, he's basically the best there is. Yeah. And I think the fight scenes were just slow, kind of bulky. I know you have the costume on, but I thought they were... Yeah. Look at that and then look at some of the YouTube you know, like fan-made videos yeah. of Batman. And that guy's like whipping it up. So I, it, like that kind of... Lo- that's, that's the main thing that lost me. That and then I need a superhero moment. I need that one moment where you're just like... Yeah, you know where you're just cheering for the good guy, and they were so focused on making it real, like the vibe, yeah. that they never 
they needed to just nudge him just that little bit to make him a bit better than... Well, I mean, you know. he's in this, like, fantastical world. Yeah, they did and a great so, job at that. But I feel like they can allow him to have moments that are bigger than life. Yeah. Because you're fighting people like the Joker, <laughs> you know? Like, that's not a dude that you're going to find that's, in our world. Yeah. So, like, the you can give him that moment of where he can, he can do something that we as normal people cannot do mm-hmm. because that's what makes him so great. Yeah. So... It, it, that that that's where they that's the only where, place that they lost me because performances were great, stories were cool, you know, and the world they created was great. But just that one, they were so focused on making it real, yeah, that they forgot they were making a superhero movie, yeah. You know? And I, then at its heart, it is a comic book, yeah. and you cannot keep all of the you cannot keep parts of the comic book, and not have that be pervasive in the entire world. Otherwise it's going to take you out of it. I was, and you know, I'm older than you. I was a little kid. I was a, I was like in second grade or something, but I saw the Christopher Reeve Superman. And I remember there's a moment where, you know, he has the Superman moment. I think she's falling out. Lois Lane's like falling off a building or something. And he catches her. He catches her. And then she looks up and the helicopter is going to fall on them. And Mm -hmm. then he catches that. And I remember the whole theater like erupting. Like, yeah. you know, the spectacle. It was a superhero moment. Because you just get so jazzed about yeah, it. Like, the, that's so just, awesome. They never get, even, well, even, you know, what, Batman gets his ass kicked by Bane, and then he comes back like, all right, now I'm going to fight you slowly, and, and then maybe <laughs> beat you. Like, it was, there was nothing about that that was, you know, and then, yeah. you know, whatever the other one was where, uh, you know, the, the autopilot in my ship is... <laughs> broken or maybe it isn't <laughs> who like, knows like who cheered like y- think, yay you've i think you marvel your... has found the formula nobody's got it better than those guys. i think marvel has found the formula and i think dc is still looking for it dc's lost because they do this um we're so going to get into sarah moore but now we're <laughs> geeking out on movies but i mean no but this is sarah moore this is what i do oh, so we're see, good you're you're I'm, I'm i'm like i'm hugging you from afar right now <laughs> just because i love this we get, we're going to have to just hang out more just because of this. I live for this kind of yes, stuff. Yes, let's do it. Well, yeah, it's funny because, well, and it's, it's weird because you have to separate what real Marvel, Marvel movies are and what the not real Marvel movies are. I don't know if you know about all those weird logistics going on. Like yeah. Spider-Man isn't owned by Marvel yeah, anymore. Spider-Man the movie Man rights. is owned by Sony. Right. And because Disney bought all of the Marvel rights, which I think is great. Oh, because yeah, yeah. Disney, there's there's no company that knows how to protect a brand like Disney. They know what Like they know how to promote it. And, and like they acquired Star Wars and I peed my pants a little. Yeah. I was really oh, excited God. about it. Well, you know what they do with the Marvel things? They put them in their own building. And they don't walk in there. They don't. Mickey Mouse does not go into the room like, "Hey, what's what, what yep. are you doing? Give me a give me a cameo." Yeah. Like they let them do what they do, and they're like, "Oh, and here's our Disney money." Also, let's just support you in let's being support awesome. You. We're not gonna like try. They care. They know that they know their fan base. Yeah. And they're letting them do it. Yeah. Now, I will say the last Spider-Man movie. Again, it, there's a moment. There's a moment where whatever he first sees Electro. So look at Amazing Spider-Man 2. Is that what it's called, yeah. I guess? I don't know. Uh, I should just I peek know. in my... The one with Andrew Garfield. Yeah. The yeah. second one. So the one, the, the more... Re- yeah, the second one with Andrew Garfield. Where yeah. he's, you know, uh, Jamie Foxx. Okay, so Ray Charles is Electro. Right. And all of a sudden, uh, they're, he's, he's there throwing electricity. And they're giving him on in. They're yeah. doing all that thing. And then, uh, wow, that would be great if that Ray would Charles would have awesome. played Electro. Too late, I guess. But oh, still. Um, Missed opportunity. They're doing the thing. And there's a one moment where he notices like there's electricity all over the floor and it's getting, I think it's like working its way up to like a, a stairway of uh-huh. pe- full of people. Yeah. And they do this slow motion thing and you know, it's a little campy, but still he like has this moment where he has to flip, figure out a way to stop people from electrocuting themselves, you know, because the whole ground becomes electrocuted and he flips back and the music is perfect and the, the, the scene is perfectly it's shot. A, and it's and then allowed he's, to be campy. Yeah. He stops and he like did it, and yep. for that moment, you're like superhero. You're like, yeah, man, superhero you're moment. The, you're the greatest. Yeah, and that's the middle of the movie where none of the Batman movies. They just ended with like, well, that was quite a piece. You I know? did, I did that. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought I felt more like, especially the one with Heath Ledger. I felt like awesome. Yeah. But I felt more like I just watched The Godfather. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas you watch. That second Captain America movie. Oh man, that's like Winter a great... Soldier was the shit. freaking that amazing. Was, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, so good. But that's like watching a great political suspense thriller, you know? Yeah, 
but, but it with was superheroes. Super, yeah. <laughs> and like, I never really gave a crap about Captain America. Yeah. Like, uh, he, you know, I understood his importance and but why he was created and whatever. But like, Chris Evans, oh dude, is so good. So good. And he, like, I when he says those, and he has stupid lines. Let's yeah. be fair. Like, <laughs> like Captain America has stupid lines to say, but like I believe him he's like when he says it. Guy yeah, or whatever, but yeah. like I buy into it. I'm yeah. like, yeah, absolutely, Steve Rogers. I am with you. <laughs> like, like totally. And and I don't. I I give him a lot of credit because I feel like cast improperly yeah. like that could have gone really poorly but that's another thing all right so if if nobody quite gets where we're going with the, like the ownership thing i think it was the i think it was the 90s like early 90s marvel comics was going bankrupt and they had to sell off movie rights so they could still use all their characters in tv and in print and mm-hmm. things like this cartoons you know you can see all of them doing whatever but they had to so they sold spider-man to sony they sold i think the fantastic four to 20th century fox uh-huh and then uh, that's also who owns the X Men, you know. Yes. And I know the X Men movies in some ways were fun to watch for a lot of people, but if you know the stories and everything, like, kind of just you know, it, compare the X Men to the Avengers. If, if I, anybody it, like doubts, yeah. like, no, they were great. Like, no, no, they could have. No, it could have been, like been Iron great Man. because I could've love been, the X Men. Yeah. Like, I I love their arc, and like, I have a, a very uh, a soft spot in my heart for Dark Phoenix. She's mm-hmm. my favorite you are so cool i that's, that's love not her that's not as mainstream but it's mainstream no, but she's so great um and she's ha- talking to an expert <laughs> she this, has, this is a real deal she has the, the, like the most interesting arc and in how she went dark and then tried to pull herself back and couldn't get there and like she has this she's this really complex female character and they they sort of like m- kind of addressed it like one time yeah. maybe a little bit and then they're like well i don't know maybe she could go i don't we're not gonna get well, into don't that. even That's get me started hard. on the solo wolverine movies i mean those there's were, like a thousand of them they were terrible i mean just it's, it could, I, because when i hear about the source material we're taking it from this frank miller chris claremont story and, yeah. and i've read that frank story miller is great the, the the actual book that they were taking that they were basing his like solo movie on is brilliant i mean it's just a great book yeah and they just Worst ending, by the way. I, the one thing I did enjoy, whoa, and my, my brother Paul, there's somebody at my door. I'm not going to get my door. Or actually, maybe I should. This Let, is interesting. This is a first. We're going to pause surprise. for a pause. second. It could be the poli- Marvel police. Uh-oh. Okay, look, I hate to interrupt this podcast, but I have to take a second to talk about our sponsor, SchwabMusic.com. So listen, if you are a recording artist and you want to take your music to like the highest level of professionalism, then you need to find SchwabMusic.com. Okay, the company is run by Brian Schwab. This guy's like a sound scientist, you know, when it comes to mixing or mastering, a lot of studios hand out a cookie cutter format. It's it's not cool, but SchwabMusic.com will not do that. In fact, they'll like sonically spit shine your piece to specific fit wherever it's going. You know, most people don't know that you need a different prepping for iTunes than you do for like vinyl or a CD. If you take your recording to schwabmusic.com, your song, your recording, your your baby will be at its best wherever you place it. And, and now they're based in Chicago, but that doesn't matter. You can get online and sit in on your session either way. It's really cool. They have it set up so that you can you can talk to the studio and hear any changes made in real time. See, so it doesn't matter where you are. You can be in L.A., you can be in New York, you can, be, you can, you, you can colonize on the moon. And actually, as, you know, as long as you have internet service up there, you can get online from your home on the moon and work through your studio session. So I'll say it again in closing. Get your recording to schwabmusic.com, S-C-H-W-A-B, music.com, because they care and they know what the hell they're doing. All right. So I hope you're liking the podcast so far. Oh, let's get back to it. My daughter's birthday was yesterday, and I ordered a bunch of frozen stuff, and it was it, it didn't show up. So apparently, it's here now. It was during my. I I still thought it was like, this is Marvel. We don't like what you're saying about the Wolverine movies. You shut up about X. Step away from the microphones, the both of you. Yeah. So hands up. I'm sorry. It was that was nobody's ever shown up in the middle of a podcast before. Well, there you go. It's your first. I feel oh, I feel like you've I been was a part of podcast for history. history. It was a it's good. Effect. No, but it, the funniest thing though is the um, this fantastic store, uh, fantastic four store that I'll get to in a second. But, but just so people know, the you'll see the Marvel kind of card in front of all the movies because there's a certain amount of ownership. But like Marvel doesn't own Spider Man, even though he's in Marvel Comics. He, he, right. Wolverine and the X Men. Yep. Fantastic Four. 
Um, I think that might be it. Like the other ones that they're putting out, they, they have all, the them. rights to all the Avengers and they have... So um, Iron Man was not an A-list character. Captain America was not an A-list character. And no. that's what I love about... Like that's how they've proven themselves yeah. because they basically said, no, 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 now we have enough money to be our own movie company. Let's take who we still own and let's, let's do it right. Let's make them right. awesome. And they care so much about the source material. And you still have to tweak some things for the movies, but they tweak the right the things. The right things. There's nothing that and ticks us off. Here's the only thing, my only complaint is that um, there's not merchandising support for their female characters. But you know why? I mean, I think I think the the whole and I think they're going to start working on this because now there's going to be uh, some solo. I, there's going to be a new uh, Miss Marvel coming yes, out. Yes, Miss Marvel, some, which is great. Yeah, I think that's going to change. But I, I think what happened is the one little business tweak that had to happen for Disney. Mm-hmm. The whole reason this is happening with you know whatever they bought it for like a billion dollars or whatever is they had no like like zero dude demographic. Yeah, Disney has been like rocking it with the princesses and oh with, sure. So they ju- and I think. They'll. St- I think it's going to start leaning that way because uh, the one thing I'll give them credit for, and yeah, I, I haven't. I don't know where the where the marketing lies or merchandising, but at least the females that they decide to put in their movies are so They're strong. They're so kick ass. Black Widow, man. Oh my god, she yeah. had one of the most amazing introductions in the Avengers, or oh um, yeah, like the first time. I mean, we saw her in Iron Man two, two right? and like whatever, she was okay in that. But that scene in Avengers, but when she's tied to the chair and then yeah. she kicks everybody's ass, <laughs> yeah, like awesome. I was like, someone needs to write me a scene like this so I can do it because it's I can do so that. Amazing. You know, we should. Well, we, then okay. write it. No, I'm in between, <laughs> so I can. No, I'm I'm in post, so yes. we're, we, yeah, we'll, we'll do something. You talked about it before. Yeah, she's and that just all went it's away, so, so we're great. Gonna, she's such a, an interesting character, and she's so good. Like in the Avengers, um, the where she's interrogating Loki, like she outsmarts the trickster god. Yeah, like, that's. Huge, yeah. like she's it's physically, so big. Physically, like dominates every dude she runs into, and then be- she's but even be- cognitive. It's because she's she smart even, like, about yeah, it. Yeah, there's even a scene where she just, you know, outsmarts a guy. So it's, like on every not, level, she's not rocks about it. Yeah. like like she's she is physical. She can clear a room physically if she has to, but she can also outthink. You know, but she's more a spy anybody. than a soldier, and yeah. they make a big deal out of that. Like, yeah. and I think that's really like cool. Like, she's used it. Like, I can take you down if I need to, but it's because I know exactly where to hit you because it'll disable, you know, pressure points and yeah. stuff. As opposed to, I'm going to just outclass you physically. Yeah. Like, I think that's it's great. Smart. They did it right. They, yeah. They're doing everything right. You know, and yeah. and the fact that they were able to do that with characters that aren't you know iron man was not a household name right and then they get like robert downey jr who now is so great now nobody can see anyone else in that role but no. n- that so many people did not want him in that role right. well they had to fight for so it, great you and know? he's the right level of snark yeah he's the right level of like God, i really want to hate you because you're kind of a douche but i kind of <laughs> love you instead mm-hmm. yeah so well, good. They do it up right. It's crazy, and and the fact that I just want them to own everything now. I want them to get it all back, and they can't because well, I know there's that deal with Sony now. So Spider Man will with be the in crossover. the Avengers. I think, I think at least it'll be fun seeing him in the universe, and because they treat their world so well. Yeah. When he's in the Avengers movie, it'll be fine. But so now Sony's decided, like, no, we're gonna keep him. But Marvel, you can borrow them, only you have to help us make our right. Spider-Man movies better. And you know how they got that? They were able to say, oh, by the way, uh, your last Spider-Man movie, who's like a famous character that everybody knows made $700 million. Oh, yeah, you know Guardians of the Galaxy, which nobody's ever even heard of? Yeah, we made like $780 million. So, so they were able to good. prove. I loved but Guardians of the Galaxy. nobody even knew... Most people, yeah, even, not... even true comic book geeks, didn't know much about those guys. Yeah, you know? they're not like... They're not your big three, you know? They're not you can go out there. Spider-Man, Batman, yeah. Wonder Woman, Superman. Like, all of those people, like, those those are big ones that everybody has heard of, even yeah. if you live under a rock. That's oh, true, You've man. heard of those. Uh, it, people, they just, and DC needs to figure it out. Well, I want, I'm going to get, we're, we're going to, like, round back into geekdom. Round back. Yeah, because, <laughs> so now you guys know, oh, I, I, right, I had to stop the, the mic, you know, to get whatever the FedEx guy brought, the, you know, gifts here. Uh, but while I went off the mic, 
I, I just turned to Sarah and I'm just like, we're, we're, we're hanging out, right? Like we're going to hang out like the first 10 minutes of the podcast. Now I know that I can, we're going to, we're going to totally like geek, geek out, out with you. And be yeah. ridiculous. We're going to have like a geek day. Mm-hmm. We're going to figure that out then. That's going to have to happen like once a month geek day. I actually just recently released a photo shoot. Are you, who are you? I the- was, um, a pinup version, like a 1940s pinup version of Pixie. From the X-Men. Who can find, where can people find these uh, things? You can find it on my actor page on Facebook. So okay. it is uh, actor Sarah Moore, Facebook actor and Sarah Moore. And S-A-R-A-H. H, it's with an H. Um, but she was super fun because she has wings and pink hair. And I got myself like a 1940s like high-waisted bikini and I put the X-Men symbol on it and I put it in my <laughs> hair and I... <laughs> made myself the wings and I had like, yeah, it was super fun. She, and she wears gauntlets. So I had like gauntlet bracelet sort of thing. Yeah. Super fun. See, and you're like a true, you're somebody who can really round this out for, you know, you can like spread the word in the best way. You're like the best vehicle to spread the word. You're a pretty girl and you're, you're smart. You know, you have a wit to you and then you speak that language. So, I mean, it's, you're the kind of person, because I still see a Marvel or DC once in a while just getting, oh, let's get the hot blonde who obviously doesn't know. She doesn't know what's going on. But she's a spokesperson. Like, oh, we're really excited about this <laughs> new Marvel superhero. Yeah. And you could just tell, like, you don't, you know. don't know. who, yeah, you don't know who that is. You're reading the script, lady. Reading the and script. you know what? Like, Good for them for, for booking the work. Like, I don't begrudge them that no, at no, no, all. No. But, like, but if they get somebody, but give them a follow-up question, run into that girl at Comic-Con and be like, oh, my God. But I mean, it, like, how do you feel about the fact that they changed this from your original story? Like, uh, I don't know. What do you mean? Like, oh man, you know, Wolverine's healing factor. Like, would it ever go away? Like, what's a healing factor? Like, she won't, she won't know. Skeleton, yeah. I don't know. Well, so and it, so uh, it, we're totally rounding back to geekdom, but I, I have to like get back into you, man, because <laughs> again, it comes down to this this slow and steady pace. And what I love about what you do. And what you, and Jeff, your husband, what you guys both do, there's just this this presence. You know, you 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 guys are in there, and it is it's so perfectly slow and steady, and and you just see the climb. It's and just I, like like very slowly gathering things as we go. It's yeah. just kind of like pushing the rock up the hill, and it's getting a little bigger every time. So it sometimes it's it takes awesome. A little slower. You have this <laughs> level of celebrity status online because of the show, and the show is great, guys. Check out Gamer Chick. And here's what, oh man, well, here's what kills me about the show, what I really like, is I saw season one, and that season one was very much like season one, yeah. you know? It's, I we think, like to I call that my pilot season. Yeah, I, but that's brilliant, <laughs> and that's, if, A, the fact that you can actually say that yeah. is awesome, because a lot of people may not say, like, no, no, the first one, you know, my, maybe I was guessing a little bit, but then I had it all figured out, you know, and it's all about, I, I'd rather put things on front street yeah. than put on, like, any kind of facade of, like, no, we got this, like, no, you know what, we don't. It was know? messy. The doing season one was messy. We started filming before we had finished writing the whole thing, uh-huh. like, it was people gathering and it it took like six months to shoot because we were like oh now i'm finally done with this episode let's get together and then i don't know where this is oh um and we we didn't have as good equipment and like we went through all this stuff and we we really didn't know what the hell we were doing like anybody wants to learn how to work in production I'm serious. Find Gamer Chick. And is it just, it's, is that the best way? If they went to YouTube and put um, in our Gamer channel, Chick series or? Uh, Gamer Chick Show. Gamer is Chick our, Show. Is our series. Yeah. If you type in Gamer Chick, very different. Okay. Okay. It's <laughs> not safe for work. Okay. Um, fair enough. Well, what, what's, what is your channel? What's Our your channel, channel is Gamer Chick Show, all lowercase. Okay. So. this Anybody working in production, uh, you know, any novices, anybody, anybody like kicking it off, if you really want to learn how it should be done, um, watch season one and then watch season two. I sent you guys uh, like a lengthy Facebook message mm-hmm. about season two because it was, I mean, it's the perfect example of of work. It's the perfect example of just constantly going. There was a and, lot of things p- wrong with season one that we went, we're never doing that again. Yeah. And then we took season two and we upgraded um cast not well we have the same cast but they got more comfortable being in front of the yeah. camera and we upgraded crew we had more crew members to deal with and we had better equipment and we had like real lights and like much better sound equipment and i mean anybody out there you 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 would probably tell them what like 
if you have your idea and your gear, and if you have to use your iPhone first or whatever, do it. Do it. Just get it out there. But then start learning the craft and keep going because, mm-hmm. man, everything. When I look at the second season, first off, uh, production. First off, production. So much better. So much better. <laughs> Just the, the clarity, the lighting, everything. You know, you guys, and you guys are fun with the green screen stuff. It's awesome to see. So there's a, there, you have to have some sort of effects if you're going to pull this off, right. you know, with the gaming stuff. But then the performances as well. Everybody, you know, yeah, it, not nobody sucked in the, in season one by no, no means. But there is a there is a more natural vibe. There's a natural de- uh, development and delivery, and everyone is comfortable in their character's skin yeah. in the second se- season, including you. Because I would imagine, even with your experience. You're wearing a million hats in season one, so you probably had to acclimate yourself to yeah. to that. Not so much as your character that you created and you're writing, but, but second season. There's still other concerns that I was worrying about. Like, yeah. do you, you know, like maybe during this scene, I'm worried about time because we only have this until the, it's my job to get us out of here at a certain time. And then she writes it. She's the <laughs> star of it. She, you do write every I episode. I do. I write every know. episode. Yeah. Um, and, it, and then it, you have to stay fit because <laughs> when you're, you're, you're like normal geek girl for the normal see, you know, like scenes, but then she has to be like mid drift girl for a gamer chick. She has to, you know, she's got to sell it, man. I've got a lot of abs. Yeah. You, there's got, there has to be. So, and then you have to deliver the, performance yeah and like season two was it it was a little intimidating for me because i wrote like real acting moments for myself oh nice um season one was really sort of slapsticky and fun like cutesy because i was like i don't know if we're gonna get to do anymore so let's find all these funny things that i think would be funny and let's just shove them all into season one and then we finished season one and i started getting phone calls from cast that were like so when are we gonna do more of that (laughs) and I was like oh well hold on a minute let me write it um and so I I gave myself a, a full arc and we shot it all like over two long weekends shot all of the real world stuff and then all of the like fantasy world stuff in two separate weekends and um I gave myself like heavier stuff to do and like I had to cry and like it was such a weird atmosphere on set. I like when you when your character kind of just bottomed out oh, the, yeah. the way the, you're the choices there. That was really good. She, she just like hit like everything was taken away from her. Yeah. And it was really interesting to play because you know most of the time it's it's funny and we're slapping people and we're throwing shit and uh, pie in the face kind of yeah. humor. And then we had this really super serious scene where she's home and she's, her mother is dying in front of her and she's losing it because she's terrified that she's not going to be able to, like she's not ready to let her go. And then she's terrified that she's not going to be able to like pick up the mantle and continue on and, and, and do all these things that she needs to do. And, um, we were shooting against the green screen and normally between takes, there's like, yet to that, you know, there's people making jokes and saying all this stuff. And, yeah. and we were shooting that scene and I'm just, just sobbing all over myself. And, and there was a cut and like, it was silent. <laughs> like you could hear a pin drop. And then Jeff said quietly from the back of the room, okay, we're going to do it one more time. And like, there's this really like soft, like no, <laughs> nobody break the mood. Everybody be quiet. <laughs> Let's just do it one more time. And, you know, and we went in and did another take of it. And um, I ended up doing it, you know, maybe three or four times. And yeah. that can be really draining because you're, I, because you're just like crying physically. What was your, how did you, it's weird. I, I did a short called Sandcastles that I wrote and then directed it actually with Janice. And we had a girl who had to cry and fall apart at the end. She, before we shot, she was sitting on the beach, is on a beach and she's just listening to like Nine Inch Nails. Just like, and just like find your trigger. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was your... Um, for me, if it's, if you can control your breathing, mm-hmm. you can get it there um if i can work myself into what happens to your breath when you're crying that sort of like catch breath like where you can't quite get a full breath because you're so upset if i can get my body there i can just sort of get myself in the right 
Nice. Mindset. And then. And it's a different, it's not necessarily like a scenario or a story you're thinking of. It's more. No, I find it's much easier to focus on the physical Mm -hmm. um, because I also need to be able to remember my lines. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't want to like be thinking too heavily of of a. Of a some of a different story that would like or a feel or whatever that would get me there because then I, I need to be able to channel it into what I'm saying. Yeah, I had to do a scene for a movie um, where I had to go. I had to like freak out. I had to be calm and hopeful and fine, and then sobbing, and I was terrified <laughs> that I wasn't going to get there because yeah. it's such a big switch. It was like a, a, like a crazy Ivan. It was just like, suddenly you're going the other direction. Um, and I think I was so freaked out about it that I was already like on edge. <laughs> <laughs> you were able to use that? So I went in, I like used that, like, oh God, what if I can't get it out? And uh, yeah, That's so we were awesome. able to get it. Oh God, how am oh I going to do this? I have to cry. How am I going to? Oh, wait. And there oh, wait. Was, oh, this is good. Yeah. Okay. It was oh, hard awesome. because it was like, it, it was she the character was in the doctor's office and she was asking if she was ever going to be able to have a baby uh-huh. and she wanted to have a baby and she asked him and the doctor was like well i think you know you shouldn't you, i would advise not having one and she's like okay that's great but can i like there's still hope and she was like still like ready and he was like no you can't and she just loses it and like i had a really great scene partner who gave me a lot to work off of, which I think helped. But um, I came out of it just (laughs) like, because she has to like, it was like one of those raw, like you you scream it and then you're crying and you're just all this stuff. Like I came out of the room because it was this little tiny doctor's office room. And I came out and like a bunch of crew members were outside and they were like, there's like giant wide That's eyes awesome. and like, I don't know how to talk to her now because she just flipped <laughs> out in the other room. I just like the fact that you, you're like all, you're, you're filled with angst because you can't be like filled I was with angst. Like, I wasn't going to be able to do it. <laughs> Why are you crying? With just, I, I picture know, like I tears rolling down. Why are you crying? Because I can't, I can't cry. cry. <laughs> it's such an intimidating <laughs> thing. Like, because the camera is, you know, like is sometimes as close as this microphone yep. is to your face. Yeah, and like, man. and they're like, emote, do it. Yeah, like, I had, did, did you have you done much kissing? I had to do. I, oh, yeah. I've, I've done maybe two on stri- on screen kisses, and it's just you so know. Awkward. And one it one was like on a bed, and the director had it timed, so it was like thirteen seconds or something. Oh yeah. You know, so I'm like, am I counting in my head? <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. And, you know, oh. it was a pretty girl too, but you can't. No. You really can't enjoy it. There's no. There's just no. It can't happen. Mm-mm. It can't happen. Because I I did one, the most awkward one I've ever done. Uh, we were in a stairwell that was approximately 100 degrees. Mm-hmm. Like it was so hot. And we had been in there probably for about like eight hours. It was like a full day sort of thing. And we were covered in fake blood because like he had gotten shot in the scene. And so there was blood everywhere and it was like drying. So it was like sticky. And then um, to get us both in frame, mm-hmm. I had to be like crouched and you weren't even in a comfortable position right and like my legs when my feet went to sleep and so like I couldn't stand up afterward and like we had to do it and like get close and the camera's you know right next to your face that's no good and you have to my coffee while you chat yeah and you have to keep you have to make it look like you want to be there that I'm so impressed by (laughs) I'm so impressed by anybody that really makes it look good when, and, you, when you have the love scenes or the kissing And scene. his pregnant wife was the one, the actor's pregnant wife was the stills photographer. Oh, perfect. That's it. See, that's all weird. And she was like eight months pregnant. She you was know? like super pregnant. And she was in that stage of pregnancy where like... And then here you are just fit on top just, of her husband. Um, just like, oh my gosh, no. Like, hey... <laughs> And like we're, I'm friends with her, and she's great. And but we're it's fine, not, it's a weird, you know, it's such a strange. To, to you know, it's it's even worse if you don't if you are friends with the person, mm-hmm. then the, your job is to like just be sensual or whatever it right. is. Right. Well, and also a lot of times I have to kiss people, and my husband is directing, so, oh my and God. so he's like behind the camera, and like, like go ahead, kiss my wife. I'm telling you, you know, it's super. I weird. don't know if we're making a follow up. You know, uh, we had we had a lot of production woes in the in the the film that. We've been working on there's yeah. so, so many things where like 
just tricky, tricky behind the scenes stuff that happened. Now that uh, Paul and I are like steam heading this thing, like, okay, wait, wait, no, we, we found a path. It. We found a good path. Yeah, it's it's been great. Um, but I, yeah, you know, uh, my wife Janice is in it, and uh, it's hard to. There, uh, she's probably going to have to kiss Dan Maul in the next movie. I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird. It's super yeah. weird. Even if you're like comfortable. By the way, the one time her parents came to set happened to be a time that she's just kind. Of, she's not really, not really slutting the scene up. But you know, there's quite an extended bending over. There's an ass shot for yeah, sure. The sure. movie ends with an ass shot. It's <laughs> somewhere in there. And, and here you go. Yeah, and Mom. You, yeah, and you could just tell the camera guys are. They were, we have a we have a, a helicopter in the movie. Yeah, I heard. That's awesome. Yeah, but the camera guys were way more excited about her filming her butt. Sure. Then well, they she's were got about a nice the, butt. She's got a nice butt. About she does. they were they were more excited about that than about the helicopter. But th- that was the time that her parents visited set because she doesn't really have much in, uh, in the movie. Yeah. They're like oh oh this is neat. Well look at the cameras. Like what are you doing? I'm gonna <laughs> don't worry about it. They're just gonna take an ass shot. By the way this. This was not a kissing scene, but the the same uh, like it was one of the old films that I did that I had to kiss the girl. The same movie, I, it was like my character and her her character are like on the run, and we're in a hotel. Mm-hmm. And you know this is purely indie. We're kids. Yep. You know what do we do? We just rent out a hotel room. We weren't asking for permission. Right. You know, whatever it takes to do it. Yeah. And. I'm like off to the side, whatever, looking at the script. She's just lounging. She's just, the girl's just laying on the bed. And she's just laying on the bed. And um, <laughs> like a cleaning lady walks in, stops, just sees this girl laying on the bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the sweetest gentleman in the world, our, our, our director for that film, is just sitting behind a camera and he just looks <laughs> it's like the best scene ever. It's like, whoa. Uh, I, I loved that. Hey, she's like, guys. Yeah, she's like, oh, I, so sorry. Yo, so sorry. Whoops. And she backs away like, they're making a porno in 208. <laughs> So no, when that, you're, that room's gonna need extra cleaning. That room we're gonna need Lysol like a mofo. <laughs> Ew, um, burn the sheets. What? So was your training in theater? Yes. And, okay. Um, I went to school and I have a, a bachelor's of fine arts in theater okay. with an acting emphasis, but I also uh, took sort of like a movement specialization. Okay. Which, which has been super helpful for me because I tend to get cast as not people. So I've played clones and fairies and explain elves the and, um the movement class that sounds pretty cool. Um, it's really just figuring out how to isolate every part of your body. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I took like four years of movement, and that include included like tai chi, but also like f- figuring out where your muscles are and how they connect and how you can move them so that you can get the desired effect. Sort of ground up. Um. Well, my character. Uh, a long time ago was in a car accident. So I'm going to give her a limp or something like that. And mm-hmm. then finding those physical characteristics so you can help build the character. Oh, that's cool. And it, it's helpful for me. I use it a lot on Gamer Chick because the two characters that I play, the one in the real world is really closed off and shy and um, really unsure of herself. And so I use a lot more like motions where or, or stances where I, I kind of physically close myself uh-huh. off from people and then in the fantasy world she's like super confident and so I there's a difference squared my shoulders and it, you you hold your body differently and you walk differently and that has helped me really change flip between the characters really easily because my body feels different and so I can go okay now I'm Nin I'm a, a different person, and this is how she talks, and this is how she walks. Yeah, I'm telling you, aside moves. from the, the, the mid-drift and the obvious costume tra- change, right. there is a complete difference in physicality when I see you, you know, in the real world, world and then when all of a sudden the gamer right. chick shows up. And we've the, tried to, like... What, yeah, I always forget her character, like the actual name of Gia the, is the, the little... No, the, so, um, oh. the when you're a superhero Nin. game. Her Nin. name is Nin. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> she's great. I love playing her. She's like... Putting on my favorite coat. Yeah. Like, I, I love getting to do that. It's so much fun. And we didn't film anything this past summer, and I, I'm, like, Jones in for it. I'm oh, like, my but God. But I haven't, because we've filmed every summer for, like, five years. And this past summer, we didn't film anything. So here's the thing, and, and here's what, what I love about you, is the fact that, you know, you have two kids. I do. You know, how old are they? They are seven and nine. So seven and nine. Yeah, Jensen, my, uh, my son, is seven, and he's in second grade. 
And then Indigo is my daughter, and she's nine, and she's in third grade. And everything that you've done, everything that you've accomplished in, you know, in the sort of fantastical world of film <laughs> yeah. and webisodes, and so, I mean, everything you've done has been you. Like, you've made every step, you know, I know you and Jeff are, are a team, but you it's just yeah. amazing to see that there's not, you know, Hollywood's not right here right now, or there's not like, hey, okay, here's your, you know, your advance, or we're right. signing, you know, and the fact that you've just made it, and you continue to make it, and not only do you continue to make it, um, folks, listen to this, okay? <laughs> she, she, she's constantly moving forward and improving along the way, you know? Yeah. There's, I don't know if there's this level of just non-satisfaction or just the joy of learning or whatever it is, but I notice a change from A to B, not only in the material, not only in, in the webisode, but in everything you do. I've noticed that, okay, well, wait, she's working really hard to get to this Gen Con. You're getting to a conference and then you're meeting people and suddenly you're getting more press from somebody you've met and you're, yeah. you're being able, you're, you guys are daisy chaining each other. And then all of a sudden, I hear you get a random role in an indie film. So it's like you're just like plugging away. Well, it's and it's, it's 90% so of the gig is networking. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, you can be the most amazing performer in the world. And if you don't know how to talk to people, no one's going to let you perform. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you need to be able to be out there. And I have met, you know, the indie web series community is like a little family is it see i don't know much about that you know i have a it youtube is. channel that's random yeah like, oh but, here's what i did today but you like know. the creators yeah. um are like they just want everybody to succeed like they just want oh, like that's awesome. i'm making this thing and you're making this thing and let's let's talk about it and let's be friends and let's make this stuff out there and like i've actually gotten um from doing gamer chick i met like i met my friends Chris and Ann Lukeman, whose whose company is called Kill Vampire Lincoln. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, super fun. Uh, and they make a web series called Once Upon a Time in the 1970s, which is about time traveling robots, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it can't be that. I mean, who doesn't love that? Who doesn't? Uh, and they had put out season one, and we were chatting, and we like shared a booth at C two E two, and we were talking, and they were C2E2? like C two E two, Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. Nice, which is in April. So there's one coming up. Um, but we shared a booth there, and we were hanging out, and, and they were like, oh, we're getting ready to shoot season two. And I was like, oh, I loved season one. And they were like, you, do you want to be in season two? And I was like, yes. Wow. <laughs> I want to be in season two. And so I've already shot a little bit for it, but I'm going to shoot some more. Um, and they were like, I got this email from them, and they were like, I don't know how you feel about this, but we'd like you to be a cyborg. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> And they were like, we, we'd like you to be like an evil cyborg. And I was like, more, yes, <laughs> it's good. And so one of the most fun things about it is that um, I have a robot hand. And so, so it, it, I, it has a... Are there any photos of this yet? A, I believe there are, yet? yeah, okay. I think there are. I have to, I'll, I'll find them and I'll send you a link Definitely. to them. But like, it, so when it's just regular, I have like a, like a long, like fancy glove on it kind of a thing, but we replace it with things. Like um, <laughs> like a like a big like leaf trimmer oh, in okay. one scene. Right. Like so, she's got she's yeah. She, what is this web series called? It's called Once Upon a Time in the 1970s. Okay, and I yeah, it's super fun. So let me ask you this then: Did you know? Were you aware of that? kind of web series community before you went in or after? So you? we like, how did sort you even of started decide? up at at the very beginning of it um i think the only thing oh, that like was you out, mean when the kind of the the whole group in itself yeah. became this kind of unit yeah so okay. uh, when we when we started filming gamer check season one and it took us forever to get it out but when we started filming it um i think the only web series that was out was the guild that mm -hmm. felicia day had been putting out oh um and so part of me went like this this is a really fun, super awesome, geeky, great web series. And then I was like, I, I could do that. Like, nice. I could do that. Um, and uh, I think part of the charm of season one of Gamer Chick is that, like, we truly were just a group of friends just, like, figuring it out. And I think that comes through. 
And people need to watch just because of that. You know, that's, yeah, it's, just it's great. really sweet. And uh, like, yeah, we could have done things a lot better for sure. There could have been different choices made and we could have made things better. But um, I'm really proud of the fact that we finished it and yeah. we got it out there. And uh, I was on a, a panel at Gen Con and I, <laughs> it was for like writing or yeah, writing a series or something. And I was sitting next to this guy who was the really nice person, but he was talking about how he had just made a, a film for Sundance Mm -hmm. and like he had, you know, like a million dollar budget. And I was like, what the hell am I doing on this? (laughs) Like we made season one for like $8 (laughs) and like two sticks of gum. And that's all we had for the entire (laughs) thing. And, um, and I was talking to the guy who runs the film festival at Gen Con, who has since become a good friend of mine, and his name is Chuck Boudreau. And I said, I, what the hell was I doing up there? I shouldn't have been there. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And he said something that has always stuck with me. And it was, of all the people that you were talking to, everybody in that room had an idea for a film. Maybe 10 of those people will write it. Maybe one of those 10 will make it. Yeah. He's like, you're already ahead of where they're at. And like, you're still going and you're still doing it. And so you should still do it. Just keep and be proud of that. And I thought like, Oh yeah. Like I, I did a thing. I made a series. Like, Holy shit. I yes, did that. Yes. And, and then we got season two and, and it took us a long time to get it out, but it's out there. And we've actually already shot season three and four and they're in post-production. And, it's super weird to go to a, a convention and have somebody recognize me from the show um, that I don't know. Like yeah. to have a stranger be like, I watch your show. I had this woman come up to me and she said, I just want to let you know that I watch your show with my 12 year old daughter and we watch it together. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like it was so <laughs> exciting. I was like, you made my whole day. And she was like, will you sign this for my daughter? And I was like, shut up. Yes. Like wow. let's do that. Um, and so it's, it's such a cool thing, like, because for me, it's just this show that I just love. It's this, it's like my other baby. It's like my third child and I love it. And so then to have other people sort of share that enthusiasm with me that uh-huh. don't have to, you know, like it would super hurt my feelings. Like if my mom didn't like the show, but my mom would like a show if I just sat and drooled for an hour in front of the camera, like she'd be like, you were so good. Honey. <laughs> right. Like, cause she's super supportive because yeah. she has to be, cause she's my mom. But like to have people who are just like, I found this through whatever. And I, think it's great and i'm excited yeah, to see what's next did you have writing experience before the show was that your first time delving into truly you um, know, being a script writer so my husband and i wrote we had a show called pyro flower radio hour okay which was a like live we performed it live so we had like a foley artist oh stuff. awesome okay and um we would meet once a month and do like the next installments and so it, it was set in like sort of a post-apocalyptic future where it's very convoluted. Um, where I, like, I love, you are <laughs> such an awesome geek. This is so cool. Like every, everything that you like, it seems like you want to do any, you know, you want to, you want to meet any challenge that's thrown your way. And I, yeah. I, I can tell that there's a longing for diversity in you, but I love the fact that like your happy place is always like, and I'm a cyborg. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I just, get to play a clone and a robot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it was like in, we, we said it in this future where like towns had sort of grown up and, and melded together. Was this on like a, a re- regular radio station or was it no, a podcast? No, we would it... perform it live and then we would... Oh, and I then, see. And then I we see. would record it while we were performing it live and then release it. Like, so wait a minute. Web. Now, your your husband's kind of like the tech guy behind most things, right? Yeah. But what I... You know, I was introduced to him because he was, you know, a theater rat just like my brother Paul. Yeah. And they grew up together. And music too. Oh, okay. I didn't even know Jeff did music. Yeah, he was in a band for like ever. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. So this end of it, because, you know, he's, I would imagine, you know, I, I would imagine you, you're you involved with the, you know, the behind the scenes production, but he's the guy kind of facilitating it from, you know, the yeah, tech I'm level. I'm bad at tech. Well, has he, like, did he study that or has he just been on his own, just chipping away, learning and learning? Because there is a difference. There, yeah. You know, he, he did a, there was a, a fight scene for victims of circumstance, you know, then he came in with the little camera. You mm-hmm. know? And it's just seeing 
he uh, he had a good eye. You know, Paul recognized that right away. You know, Paul's like, man, I love like how he shoots. He you know, frames things really. Yeah, yeah. Really but well. I mean, but now seeing the difference in you know, especially again, season one to season two. You know, there's a, there's a difference in lighting. There's a di- and and that does come with better gear. Well, but part not of it is better gear, gear. You and have part to be able of to it use is gear. is just kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, trial and error. But he he went to school. He went to college several times. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so he went first for. Uh, cinematography oh great and didn't finish but did take some courses and you know did did some of that and then he went for computers like totally changed it and was like well maybe i'm doing this and then he went back for visual effects like sort of combining cinematography and and well then the computer class definitely helps right today's world um and then um but he also is just sort of naturally he has a good eye for things and so he's sort of cultivated that he's he's done a lot of still photography like he's the photographer when I do my photo shoots and stuff. But then as far them. as like just the better production value overall, you know, again, it's, it's, it has to be technology meets work and yeah. learning. He's just, he sort of is always, is he just seeking a, things out? Okay, yeah. Okay. Like he actually sat, he did a, like a webinar yesterday. He like sat in on a webinar and just, he just finds out like, just soaking oh, it this in, is huh? going to work and I'm going to use this. And yeah. And, and we, and he does little shorts like, we'll shoot a short because he says like, oh, I want to work on this. So we're going to shoot like this five minute short and then I'm going to. Oh, just to hone out. like a different part of the craft. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We just did a short, which was really fun called gunpowder black. Uh-huh. And the whole idea of it in this sort of fantastical world is that if you drink this tea called gunpowder black, then, and you make finger guns, you can actually shoot out of your finger guns <laughs> which was so, so it's a love rid- story it is ridiculously fun <laughs> um so there's just two you know two of us um two actors it was me and my friend ed bernowski who is also in the show my god i am such a fan of ed he's so great he's um he's people hear me talk about the, the the movie I worked on with my brother and again now that we've kind of crawled through some of the production issues it's it's on a, a better fast track now which is great and he has a small part in the movie but his small part he steals he's the so movie. great he's, st- he's I love, so good I love that what that he is so willing to just <laughs> just he just commits he goes balls to the wall in everything yeah. that he does and um and that's what makes it so great to work with him is because like he is not afraid of looking like an idiot. And he does it and, well. I mean, and God. since and since so you're not afraid of doing it, you yeah. don't ever look like a fool because yeah. you just get out there and just you know he's committed to you it. And so we in. chased for a whole day. He and I chased each other around and shot finger guns at each other. <laughs> um, I yeah, he's he's yeah. one of my favorite new kind of finds. He's so fun, yeah, yeah. and he's and it's such a good guy just in general and great to have on set um, mm. because he's got a po- very positive energy and he brings all of that you know you, you need so. that too yeah it, it but uh, again back to back to jeff it kind of blows me away you know i I've, I've seen it in film and i've also seen it even just in in the singing world in the music world where you can get pretty good at something and then you kind of live there mm-hmm. you know and so that that's where you separate the men from the boys when you kind of yeah. you know i shouldn't or the girls from the women it's all right. when when it's kind of like okay well wait a minute i can do it i can do it well Right. You know, what else I, can I do? <laughs> how can I do it better? Yeah. How can I do it uh, with a wider range? How, you know what? There's, and you can never learn enough. Well, and post production, especially, like, yeah, is yeah. always changing because they're always coming always. out with new stuff, and yeah. so he's always. It's so always funny because out. I, you know, when I studied film, but before studying film, I used to make just stupid short videos with my friends. Yeah. Maybe we made fifty, maybe seventy. Of but that's these where it starts. And by the time I studied, you know, had a more formal training, uh, one thing that like flow and story flow and filming and editing was like a breeze because I'd done it a would... million times. Mm-hmm. I knew what this shot was going to look like. Yeah. Why? Because I did that shot twenty times badly. Yeah. Until I figured out <laughs> well, on the twenty first time. That's not going to work. Until I figured out <laughs> like, oh, that's how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's you know, so to see him like chipping away like that, you know, and it's. It's especially when you have, you know, multi-talented people. If he's, if he's good in music, if he's good, you know. Yeah, he's kind of good at everything. It makes yeah. me kind of sick a little bit. Yeah. Well, look at you, man. I mean, and, and so what would you tell somebody who, because I, th- I think you guys found a great side street, you know, somebody mm-hmm. who 
somebody who who wants to do work in film production or somebody who wants to make something and and okay they don't have maybe all the gear they want or maybe they don't have the means to show their film anywhere right now it's YouTube is right there. It's right there. Anyone can upload anything. It is free to upload yeah. something on YouTube. And then you don't know what's going to hit, you know? Yeah, I think it's it's finding your niche and your niche is what you love. Like yeah. don't make something that you think everybody else is going to like. So true. You have to make what you are passionate about and then and then that's how you will you will attract like-minded folk. Like I think the Gamer Chick has gotten as far as it has because I'm sort of like fanatically passionate about it. Yeah. Like, and I get so excited when I'm explaining it to people that I find myself like standing up and like hovering over them when I'm talking. <laughs> And like, I don't even realize that I'm doing it until I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you some space. I'm going to back up. Um, But like, I think people respond to that, that joy and that passion that you have for that project. If you hate the project, you can't get people on your side. Yeah. Or even if it's just the wrong reasons. I think some people try to create something that's not necessarily from within, but it's Oh, what's trendy right now? Right. What's laying in, you know? And, I, because and, I think you can feel the difference between like, I make this thing about gaming because I am a gamer and I feel it in my soul and I love it and this is my experience versus like, oh, well, you know, gaming, a lot of people are liking gaming. <laughs> it's so funny. Well, you're I'm in, make that. you know, you're in the, the Victims of Circumstance movie, which to me, yeah. you know, which I think Paul would, uh, my brother Paul directed and wrote and. I think he would gladly consider that his first season of Gamer Chick, where he's mm-hmm. learning so many things. Figuring stuff out. Yeah, but it's funny because I talked to him about this, the movie we're making, which is really a fun popcorn piece. When you see it, it's funny because it's not like it has to be, this, it can't be this great piece because it was supposed to be a 15 minute short. Right? right. But we were talking about that before Victims of Circumstance. And at one point, Paul took the reins and, and wrote a draft of the movie. And the 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 character that I created in the stories I wrote were just so it's just more popcorn. It's just fun. You yeah. know? And if, you if, need if you want to see sometimes. me do something weird and dark and twisty, check out Sandcastles, then that's my little journey into that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if you ever saw that, but check it's it. Did. A, I did. Okay. See it, yeah. It's got the little, you know, it's, yeah. it's not happy. No. <laughs> you know. But it was funny because Paul did a draft of the current movie that we're gonna it was just really dark it got really dark and it was great it was sure. really i mean he's he's he one thing that I'll, I'll give him credit for is that man he'll he'll there was a run where like every month i don't know how he did it because again the whole father thing mm-hmm. kids oh here's here's 10 issues of a graphic novel that i wrote or okay here's a novel <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Now the, I know. No, the novel was last week. Here's a book of Here's poetry. One, I'm like, how are you doing this? Like, I, 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 I pride myself on a writer as a writer, but not to that extent. Like, he, he, he's a machine. Yeah. But for that point in life, the movie we were going to make together, it was so dark and just so messed up. And, and at some point, he's like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> he's like, "I think this is me, not you." He's like, "I think I have this." Let's make something fluffy. Yeah. Well, well he, yeah, I think he realized. Like, I think. I think this is something I have to get out of my system yeah. and I've put you in it, but you are no longer. And then he made victims and that's what it was, mm-hmm. you know, because victims was pretty dark. It was very dark. Yeah. And you know, and you guys were all great in it too. It was fun to watch. It's just like, oh my gosh. It was, it's like, it was not like, I wouldn't call that a fun set <laughs> to be on. You know, it's hard to. Because it's really heavy. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's, that's what's tricky. It's there was like, no like dance offs. You how know, do you laugh side? between those scenes? You know, it's rough yeah. sometimes. So I think he was even really, to jump into well now talk about you know not not you know still learning the craft and, and all that stuff and then suddenly you know directing something he didn't write which then right. I've never acted in something I didn't direct you know so oh. that was a, a heck of a learning we had all these like growing pains to figure out you know but it it ended up being the most interesting thing that I couldn't have planned on. I mean, actually, the, the he could really work the actors. He worked with the actors very well. It was finding tones and stuff. But my favorite part of it was I'd never, I've never been, I've never had anybody direct stuff that I wrote. Mm. But to have him be a writer was really something because there, there are one or two scenes that 
it's it's there and there's the page and this is happening and I'm on the phone. Mm-hmm. But a million things go on and he like wrote a whole separate script basically not 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 with the words but he wrote a like of what's going so on much is happening you. around me you know and 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 it's just it was different it was unique having a writer's eyes on it yeah because i thought well i wouldn't have thought of that right and he gave this amazing actor amazing actor matt hummel so much to do in this one scene while i'm just on the phone and it's beautiful and, and the fact that we had this super talented dude you know from chicago street theater but that always helps yeah it's it's just <laughs> but again it's like um stretching it's mm-hmm. everybody's stretching you know all of a sudden he yeah. finds himself you know directing but he didn't write it and that's that's tricky when you've never done it before yeah you know yeah i I'd, I'd, i've i've yet to do that i've yet to you know i don't know if you guys have jumped into that world where it's somebody else's piece but well, it's another learning jeff doesn't write any of gamer chick and so okay. he directs it he's the director oh that's good though it. and that's so that's right now a right. place where he's that's what he's doing although he did uh, he's in the process of writing his first feature, which I'm super excited oh, about. Oh, that is awesome. Um, and it's called Flint Steel and the Scourge of the Skies. Who are you in this? I just want to know who you are and what you're doing. So I am Margot Malone. Who, Great name. Yeah, it's set like late 30s, early 40s, and she is a lounge singer with a questionable past. Do you sing? I do. How- Man, I don't know you at all. I know. It's like right. a brand new person. <laughs> I'm super excited about it. He's got a, a draft of the script, and we just did a table read recently. Um, and so it's going to go through some rewrites, and then we're going to start. And then he also does work for the, is it for the museum? Or what is it, you know? He used to be at the museum. Oh, okay. Um, he is sure. recently, he is no longer with the museum, and he's trying to do like the, like the sort of, independent contractor film thing. Oh, good. Thing, okay, that's good to which know. Which is a little scary. Where, where, where can people <laughs> find him? Um, that's an excellent question. I know that he has... I think he is in the process, maybe right now, actually, since I'm out of the house and it is quiet, <laughs> uh, of like updating his, his oh, like page. Oh, like okay. Yeah, so I... I in the meantime, is there out. an email? Should they reach out to you? Do you have a website? Yeah, like, what, you where know would... what? You can... Find us. Our company name is Romeo's Faux Studios. Okay. So we have Romeo's Faux Studios dot net. Um, or you so can, they can contact you, you through can contact there. Contact us through there. He has a great eye, folks. And obviously, if you're getting anything from like our chat, these people work and they work on making things better. Um, from, Fingers crossed. From, yeah. Better. <laughs> I, know, I, I like that. I like that. So definitely. You know, got to give yeah. them, give them um, a plug. Or, or you can you can get in touch with us through any of our Gamer Chick stuff. Okay. He, that, he and I are the only people who do it. I so mean, there's we like have a website for that? Or where would they go to reach um, out? Just the YouTube channel? You or? can, there's YouTube or there's, um, we're on Twitter as Gamer Chick Show. We have, uh, we're on Facebook as Gamer Chick Show, like. So lesson learned for Shit anybody everywhere. is like, just do it. Just do it. Just get out there and do it. Well, and like one of the things that it led to, which was really exciting for me, is a project that I have coming up on the horizon um, called uh, Keldia, which... <laughs> How do you spell that? C-H-A-L-D-E-A. Uh-huh. All right, I wouldn't have seen World the of Keldia. Right. Um, it is... So I... I don't know how familiar you are with like Wizards of the Coast. I, so I'm not a gamer. I'm a comic book guy. Okay. So Wizards of the Coast is uh, the people who have Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. And the co-founders of Wizards of the Coast, um, I'm going to, I don't remember Steve's name, last name, Steve Connard, Steve Connard and um, Peter Adkison. Okay. They uh, played in a D&D campaign for like a gajillion years and they love it so much that they have decided to turn it into a multiple season fantasy drama. Oh, wow. Okay. And it has like interweaving storylines, sort of like, like if you think about um, like Game of Thrones style, where things are happening all over the world, but they're all kind of going toward the same place. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Game of Thrones. I've been dying to. It's one of those shows that it's like on my docket it's that so I want to see. It sounds like it's like right up my alley. Yeah, you would love it. Yeah. But um, oh, so I met Peter because he currently is one of the um, owners of Gen Con. 
The, and Gen Con, that goes on in Indy? Or? Indianapolis. Okay. Um, and it's uh, the biggest gaming convention in the universe. Awesome. Um, and I entered a contest to game with Peter, game with the guy who owns Gen Con, and uh, got picked. Like, name got pulled out of a hat. And I went, awesome. I went up there and we played Fiasco, which is this wonderful game, um, uh, RPG. And uh, Peter kept giving everyone in the group mimosas <laughs> and i am very small yes and i was keeping up with all of the folk in the group because it was me and like three big dudes uh-huh. and uh i was a little tipsy what is tipsy sarah like <laughs> she's very giggly uh, or sleepy she's or very confident oh, apparently oh, okay. <laughs> because at the end of it we were talking and he was like i'm getting into film and i was like i have a show i'm an actor you should cast me in your next project and he was like okay well give me your card and i did and it turns out that he is friends with a an actor friend of mine jen page who is kind of a name in the geek actor community okay um she, and she's delightful and he was like so how do you feel about her and she was like you should audition her she's great and i and i was like "Ooh, thanks jen <laughs> um <laughs> and so we ended up sort of talking through this new project and he cast me in it um and it's really fun because i get to play this character named poppy who is um, a noble, um, and but she kind of bucks the system in that she wants to prove that she's just as good as any boy. Like prove uh-huh. to daddy that like I'm as useful as men are here. And so she like moves to the big city and becomes um, like an investigative reporter. Oh wow! And so she writes for the Chronicle of that world. Um, have you started filming this yet? We this? have not, but okay. I go out in in June for a photo shoot. You start your web series, right? You put it out there. Yep. Um, when you put it out, do you put out just an episode? I can't remember because I I did the binge watching. Because you binge thing. watched yeah. it. Yeah. No, we put out one at a time. Um, we've we tried to have it like a regular schedule, but because we're doing it all alone, yeah, production and everything. You know, sure. there's only so much that we can do keeping a regular schedule, yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunately. So it took us longer than we wanted, but we, we put out one at a time and then we promote it on, on social media and on Twitter, on Facebook and, you know, G plus wherever sure. we're at, just put it all out there. Um, like how did you first get it noticed by that particular community? Did you guys seek them or was so it kind of you, we or, found, or the convention? Yeah, it, it sort of was Gen Con. We had the first episode out and, uh, Somebody in our group was like, "Hey, this year they're having a film festival at Gen Con. You should enter it." And were you aware of Gen Con before this? Yes, but just I had never, but I had never been. Sure, yeah, um, but just but not in like film capacity. Just as that's a place with like geek mecca where you go and and buy dice and. So you had the piece done. We had the first episode done, and uh, somebody was in our group was like, "Hey, they're doing a film festival this year. You should enter." And we found out about it like the day before the deadline, oh. and I was like, "Oh no, that's too bad." But I ended up emailing the guy in charge, and he was like, "No, no, this is perfect. This is this is the kind of thing that we want here. Is this sort of like really gamer centric filmmaking?" And so um, we were able to sort of squeak in under the wire, and then. Since then, we we went that first year and met a ton of people in that community. You networked like crazy. Like I mean, you crazy. used it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. not not everybody. And and let me ask you about this because I see different forms. Of, you know, I've met back when I when I worked in film production before I had my own little production company. I worked specifically through DePaul University, mm-hmm. so I met so many soon to be indie film guys. Mm-hmm. Right. And the, I, I met two types. I met I met some guys who um, just kind of went for it, like, hey, what else can I do? Or, hey, what are you doing? And hey, let me tell you about what I'm doing. This is what I'd like to do. And show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I met the other guys who kind of just, you know, pulled out the cigarette and you're like, well, me. And I make art. I, I'm an artist. You don't <sighs> understand because this is my head that we're talking about. And I'm like, well, dude, you still don't know how to frame a shot yet. No, like, but be like, careful. So do it. Are you seeing people out there... 
that are, are I mean, that, that's obviously what you did. You know, but, I think you're going to find... But the people that you're meeting, too... You're going to find a couple of those, like, no, but what I make is really important, man. Yeah. Like, you're going to find that in every kind of community. But for the most part, like, some of my closest friends now are creators from different parts of the country. Like... And you guys just see eye to eye. You're, so when you're in there... You're you're working it like you get to Gen Con, you walk into the big room. How did you network? How did you? What um, was your move? Or what? So let me ask you this first. What were you armed with when you got there? Anything? I had did business you? cards. Okay, perfect. Um, and I had a T-shirt. Was there a had... working website at the time? Yes. Okay. So okay. I had. Uh, we had made sure that our our website was up with the episode. Perfect. Um, and then give them the website one more time. We're gonna. You're going to shout. Or, or right now, is it just go to YouTube right yeah, now? Yeah, just go to YouTube. That was more for the Gen Con yeah, to right, be ready. Right. Nice. You, you, had the, you, had, you had the proper weapon so, for the proper battle. Yeah, and I yeah. Had, we had a t-shirt made by a local t-shirt shop. Okay. Um, because we had like $8. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like this was this all went in together. So, so that's uh, what you were armed with. Um, Did had, you have I, physical? I was wearing a t-shirt. Any I had, hard copies? I had business cards oh. um, with a link to the website and my information. Um I did not have any physical copies. Which you wouldn't need. Because we couldn't afford to make them. And, and of course, you know, they got to go to the website. Right, and yeah. go to the website. It's all on the web. You can go there. You know, it was that sort of thing. And I went around and I talked to every damn person and was just like, this is what I'm making. I'm in a show. I'm making a show. I'm interested in giving more people involved and small artists and yeah. like you like let's how about in season two we have um like that would be a perfect purse for her can we work on a deal where maybe we get a discount and then we can pimp your website and you know do all that stuff and everybody was really like yeah man let's do this this so it's is a exciting good community. It yeah really everybody's is. really welcoming which is really cool because um i've found in in some like theater communities it can get a little clickish uh, where you like go in and they're like but you haven't been working with us forever so i don't want to talk to you uh, um but this is and i don't know if part of it was just because we were sort of all collectively floundering in the waters of just like <laughs> nobody knows quite what they're doing yet and there's something different about you know whether it's any kind of artist as opposed to like a geek you know there there's 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 quick gratification for certain artists you know you right. can be in that small theater club or or the circle of bands or whatever where yeah. there's something about now it is becoming trendy now thanks thanks to all the superhero movies we sure. spent like our first half hour yes. talking about. But there's still a mentality where, I mean, I remember the days. I, I, at first, I was an English major. Mm -hmm. Then I got this job on the loop, which happened before I should have been there. Sure. So then I switched to like radio, TV. <laughs> you know, and then I started studying film, you know. So Jeff and I have a lot in common. Yeah, it's just change, finding it, you know. It's a and, long and winding road. But all through that. Talk about being on radio and oh, oh that's cool and then all of a sudden it, even in college you're like you know hey I work I work for this station then you know everyone kind of gathers in the corner I'm like all right that's weird yeah. but you're talk about oh I, I read comic books or for anybody that like just plays games well that w wasn't exactly the cool thing to do no. for anybody for a really if you long weren't time. a teenager yeah. yeah but it's so funny that anyway thinking of that culture and how you're like yeah I like comics you know I think there's a certain level to the geek world where you're so happy to find anyone who likes who also that. likes like, the oh, thing really, you, you know, like even though it's becoming popular instant you know, friends yeah it really is <laughs> yeah. and I, I think that i think that's just something that's not going to go away for well, a and long you, time you find it, like people who are into the fandom that yeah. you're into and it's it's like instant bonding it's like you just get excited like well did you see the most recent episode of doctor who yes oh my god and, and then no, they talk about it you know there's no cool reason to be into it. You know no. what I mean? So you can be a guy who says, who just talks about like, oh, I love all the later stuff that Sting did after the police. Mm. And there, you know, and, and like even in music and in, in other, even film, I guess, there can be things where there's still that, uh, like an, an almost clickish, or there's an avenue where somebody could take to even lie to themselves and other people like, yeah, no, I'm really into that. You know, you know, Jacques Fondue's <laughs> films. I love them all. You've never heard of them? Oh, oh they're wonderful. You know, the, and it's like, okay, you don't really, yeah, hipster, I'm so over it, but I love it, but then I'm over it. It's like, well, you don't, you're not really, like, you're, the reasoning isn't coming from within where if you're a geek in any way, shape, or form, you're a geek because you love it. And when you, you meet it. another one, you, nobody is like, Oh, I, I just love the old Iron Man. 
comic books. Yeah, there's nothing about you that becomes more artsy. No, <laughs> you don't. You don't get any clout. Yeah. in social for, circles. For being, for yeah. being like, yeah, when you're like, I artsy. love these guys and girls who wear tights and there's <laughs> colorful pictures of them jumping. Like, well, so then when you meet somebody, it's like. Oh my God, it's an instant social hug. It's yeah. right there, you know? I mean, I, we're, you and I are totally hanging out. Yes. Simply because we can talk about You're this stuff. And I'm like, she's one of them, you know? One of those. We people. became fast friends, it, like, and I've known you for years. And I, if I ever saw you anywhere, It'd be very easy to just sit down. You're your Sarah Moore. You're the Sarah Moore that I've known forever. Like, sure. oh, let's hang. Let's hang out. Let's do that. That'll mm-hmm. be fun. But now it's like, oh, no, we're, we're hanging gonna, out. We're going to do something. Yeah, now it's just changed. Like, we're going to write a film together. We're going to hang out. There's going to be you know, superheroes. There's going <laughs> to Somebody's gonna be wielding magic. Someone is throwing so there a magic missile. Magic. I'm just saying. You know, maybe a cyborg. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's just it's a different culture, and I guess because of that, that makes so much sense. I mean. I'll tell you, artists out there, anybody listening, it's funny, but if you if you just delve into that world or get to know somebody from that world, I will say it's still untainted in so many ways because the love is so genuine. I you think know? also it's like, you know how you see like your kid, right? You see your child who's like five uh-huh. and they just get so freaking jazzed about like, something new that they saw and they get so excited about it and like oh my god I'm so, I love this thing so much like it's that but as adults and I think that's so great like that like yeah. child like innocence just for the joy of the thing that you love like and I think that's really the funny thing is we you know, I, I think it's it was uh, oh boy Michael J. Straczynski who wrote the movie Changeling, and he's written a couple of other other films, but he started out, I mean, he was writing uh, this great run of Spider-Man comic books. Mm -hmm. You know, really great, great run. You know, one of the best things I've read in years. And he has like a quote where he just says, you know, yeah, as kids, we're like, we just care about jumping and playing and just losing our mind in the fantasy. And then at some point we grew up and we're told not to do those things. And we should do it. And the funny thing is it doesn't have to be just comics you know it's there shouldn't there stuff. shouldn't be a reason for art to just be a, a social status point it's too bad that everyone loses that and it's more yeah. like a, well i don't want to be shunned i don't want to be looked at the wrong way because i don't know you know i don't know Wh- whatever it is i don't know who cole porter is like well okay if you don't that's, that's fine. fine that's fine what what jazzes you up what, right what, you know? well and do you, i think it's also like being inclusive about it in that like um this thing that I love. Oh, you don't know about it? Oh my God, let me tell you about yes, it. Like sharing instead let me, of disappointment. Because I love yeah. it so much and you're going to love it by the time I'm done, I swear. Yeah. Kind of a thing as opposed to like, well, I know about it, so I'm better than you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where that comes from, you know, but it's, but again, I, I guess. I feel you like know. it's an insecurity thing because like for me, I it took me a while to get there, but like, I know who I am and yeah. I'm really comfortable with who I am. And like, there are things that I unapologetically love. Like I am the biggest freaking star Wars fan in the entire world. I love it so hard <laughs> that it is like unhealthy. So were you put off by the newer movies? Um, no, you know why? Because Star Wars. Like, I don't... Oh, you're, you're like, all in. Like, there were there parts about it that I did not like? Sure. Okay. But, like, it, I got to see, like, a real lightsaber fight, not, like, a couple of old guys swinging their swords at each other. Like, I got to see, like, flipping, like... Like just big lightsaber I fights, love and I, like Wars I love world. it. It's I love, so exciting yeah. to see that. And like, and I've read all the <laughs> Star Wars novels, like all of the offshoot, like expanded universe stuff, and I love it. And oh, was like, that really cool? And did oh it? Did, God, um, so I don't cool. want to go off in too much of a tangent on, but does it get? Like, if you get the books, does it really take, like, oh, where Luke Skywalker's gone oh, and yeah, Han yeah. Solo? Okay, I'd totally. be interested. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna hit you up on like what's stuff. what's good to read, and they're then. so good, and like. I just love them because it's more of that world and I, I buy into that world and I love it. And like, I own uh, I, far too many Star Wars shirts. Like, uh, like I'm surprised I'm not wearing one today, actually. Like, I have so many. What inspired this? Is this like a martial arts? Uh, so this is Legend of Korra. Okay. Which I don't know if you know uh, <laughs> Avatar, The Last Airbender. I'm going to have to like take a picture of your shirt. Yeah, yeah. So then I it's can so post good. it on the chatter. Fact it's so good. Will, oh, that's what she's talking about. So, um... 
I'm taking a picture of her shirt on the podcast right now. You guys will see it. It's amazing. Ta da! Ta da! All right. Um, so, Avatar: The Last Airbender is a. It was an anime series on Nickelodeon in the night. Nice, uh, and um, it was brilliant. Three seasons of this big, sweeping, epic. Um, it, fantasy in that they can like control different elements. There are mm-hmm. people who control different elements and um, amazing series. And it ended and I was like, oh, it's sad because it's over. And then they did a new series called The Legend of Korra and she's like one of the next avatars. And so she, it sort of picks up in that same world, <laughs> but it doesn't have so, that same. You're so deep oh, in. God, I I'm like, love you could it. just, you, there's so many that I things that you it. could just like go. And, I can, you, yeah, we'll never be done because everything will connect to everything. Well, um, again, so it's, I think, I think the <clears throat> fact that you're a trained actress and then you're, you have a work ethic. You know, and I, I I like the fact that your work ethic kind of matches you. You keep it in line with your passion. Because why right. do something? You know, if you don't have to, you know, if there's not, you know, unless unless Steven Spielberg calls, it's sure. like, oh, well, I'll try that. And call me, Steve. Yeah, call it, call it, Spielberg. I think you should call me. I'm just her. saying, I'm yeah. around. She's <laughs> she's really nice. Um, I think, I, but it's almost like it, until that, like, why not stretch yourselves and yeah, you know, yourself I, in the way that you want I to? I tend to get keeping your passion. I go alive. after roles that are interesting to me, and they yeah. just happen to be mostly in like sci-fi or fantasy or something Folks like, like that. Folks like us in this in this middle <laughs> ground, you know. You can sort of... You have actually more freedom. Pick and choose. Yeah, you have a lot more freedom. I actually was cast, which is super exciting. I don't know if you know the actor Doug Jones. No, no. Okay, I bet you do. You just don't know his name. Okay. Ha- have you seen uh, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer? Yes. He was the Silver Surfer. Oh, very cool. He's okay. also Abe Sapien in the Hellboy movies. And he oh, wow. Was, and so, he was yeah, in I would know. Pan's Labyrinth. He was... Definitely you know, will know yeah. him then. Okay. He's, um, he's like most sought after like creature actor. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was recently cast in a project with him. Awesome. Which is super exciting. And we're sort of in that like, we don't know when we're going to be able to film because we have to work around his schedule sort of thing um but it's called uh whispers from the shadows and it is a lovecraftian story and i'm playing a creature i'm not a person okay. i have like wings and no eyes and who is behind this this production um is it a company so the person is it that person? i am had had contact with is named mark's pile how do they find you i did a web series that he co-directed several years ago. And you got that through like a Gen Con meeting or how did that, like it just, somebody you knew? Um, I honestly think that uh, I was at a point in my career where I was sort of starting out and I was wanting to do things that weren't directed by me or written by like Mm -hmm. directed by my husband or written by me I wanted to diversify and I caught wind that somebody was doing this series and I emailed them and was like I think you should put me in this (laughs) and they were like cool and they did and so do you have headshots and stuff that you're sending I do. out and the whole um, thing and then did you my send husband a reel took them. <laughs> okay, sure. yeah i have a reel um I, yeah. so again it's like you, you start off just doing what you're gonna do you don't stop right you don't even care and i've like, been building and like you do resume the best and... quality you can do at the time that you're doing it right and then i've seen the you know proof is in the pudding you know it, it, it keeps getting and, better and every time you do something I learned like, okay, well, that was not a good choice that I made there and I'm going to yeah. try something new. And, you know, I, I I use each opportunity, even like each audition as like, this is a chance for me to be that character. But already this is like probably, this, might this be one of the biggest productions you've been a part of the, this up this forthcoming piece with the guy? Yeah. I mean, I mean and um, that's... It's it's interesting because I, I think I'm at a point where I don't have to say yes to everything anymore, which is... And I know that I don't ever have to say yes to everything, but like, but you there built is a the part, point that you're right. at piece by piece. It's just right. like every brick of the wall that you were currently sitting on, you've built. Right. And that's that's such a lesson to people Where out I there can, who want to do this. I can this. start having it pay me. Not, yeah. You know, not a ton, but and 
but it's not costing me anything anymore and it's covering things and I'm, I'm able to sort of, I, I've been able to pick projects based on like, I have to get paid somehow, whether that's right. mo- monetary or in connections with somebody or maybe just because the project looks super rad and it's going to be really fun. Yeah. You know, like, so I, it's going to be in, it's going to be paid in money, connections, or enjoyment. Oh, this and is awesome. it, and if I can look at it and it can fulfill at least one of those things then I'll probably take it. Um because I have been burned in the past of like, well, yeah, you know, I don't know that I'm super excited about this project, but I'm not doing anything, so I'm going to do it and then I get on set and I'm like, oh, I've made a bad choice. Oh no. Um yeah. and I do I still always do my best and I do my work and I get out of there, but like I would rather like take something for less money that I'm more excited about. Sure. Than take something that I don't really You're feel a fire for, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So But again, lesson learned. Right. So oh. and I can sort of put that together. And I've been doing a lot of photo shoots that I build my costume and they're all geeky stuff because I wanna make sure that You make in, your own costumes? I do. For those, for the another layer of you. Photoshop. Wait, we're, we're going to take the one second pause here. One second. So it's like an eye blink to the audience. Ta-da! Six minutes or so. <laughs> just pleasantness for us to heat up our coffee. Um, all right. So yeah, that's when you're not doing all of this stuff. Again, you got to do what you got to do. Got to do something. You're a princess. I am a princess. Do you make those two or no? I don't. Those are company. So if once in a while, I might I might see you at a at a party. Yes. Yeah. Because, I, yeah, there's a certain crowd of people who know me, you know, like the person, the lady from Atlanta who, whatever, was moved by a song I wrote called Flow from my voice print CD. Great. She knows me as that guy. Right. But then this Saturday I'll be at somebody's wedding right. singing Jesse's same, Girl, yeah, you know. Yeah, same covers. So it's funny how people don't, you know, they don't always, so, and you've got that, th- we all need yeah. that. Because you have to do what you do. You gotta do something. Yeah. Like so for me, I do it, I like to keep my face out there. So when I'm not shooting and releasing something, I do photo shoots that I engineer myself. But then are you also the also, party person? I also go to parties. Yeah. Um, so I do that through a company called Magic Music and More. Do you have a, is there a character that you're always or do you have like three or four? I am uh, well, my favorite is Ariel. Okay. She's my favorite. <laughs> um, I do also Elsa. Oh, nice. Well, you have Frozen, to now. Because yeah. everybody wants Elsa everybody. at their party. So I'm saying let it go 732,000 times. Oh, you have times. to sing when you get there, too. I do. But do you really? Because once you hit the first line, aren't they all They all in? sing. Well, yeah. most... Okay, so there's... <laughs> sometimes they they sang it with you. Sometimes they're like... I am with you. And sometimes they are so overwhelmed that they just stare at you open mouthed. And so you do have to sing. So then what you're making. So then outside of that, you're when you make your own costumes, what's that for usually? Well, obviously Gamer Chick. Right. Well, if you guys haven't gotten the point, watch Gamer Chick (laughs) on YouTube. Gamer Chick Chick show. Put it in YouTube and watch it. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And and the thing is, it's always, oh, some shows don't get better. The show gets, it it keeps getting better. It keeps improving. It really does. It's it's cool. It's cool. Yay. You know. Yeah. So so do that, everybody. But um, you make costumes for other thing or for I the make, photo shoots. I do. I'm not. I don't. My sewing skills are slowly improving. But what I look t- at that. You do it in film. <laughs> you do it with cloth. So what I what I'm doing is I get base pieces and I tend to alter them. So like I did a photo shoot. One of my first ones that I ever did was um, a burlesque version of Princess Leia from Episode Four. Awesome. I don't think I've seen these. It's It was so much fun. And so I got like a corset and I got little like ruffly hot pants and I made like a flounce that goes on the back. And then I made these fans that when you put them together, they look like the viewport from the Millennium Falcon. Because <laughs> um, you know, this is you all have, from your head? Yeah, because they have fans. Is, know, I want, I'm wondering if there's a single geek who's listening to the show <laughs> that hasn't fallen in love with you by now. Like it's like every layer. It it's like this is going. like a, every layer that you add to your story just, is conceptually yeah. like a geek strip tease. It is a little like bit. right now. It's like you just you just well, you just finished all the it's dun, a dun, dance dun, of the dun, seven dun, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so funny. But I loved it. It was so much fun, and I was really nervous about the shoot because I was like, oh, I'm not gonna know how to pose, and I'm not gonna know how to do it. And so yeah. like I keep getting. I keep, but I wanted my face out there because I was 
in like a dry spell for filming. Yeah, so I man. was like, I'm going to put that out there. And I've done um, a steampunk version of Princess Jasmine. She was very fun. Uh, and then I've also done the pinup pixie and I did a comic book shoot with my friend Jen Page who I talked about earlier um that's where we did like the pop art makeup Mm -hmm. where it looked like we were a comic strip um I did that one too so it's cool man I mean you're you're little bits you don't stop yeah, you know, I, I noticed that your really dead time antsy. creates <laughs> live time for something else. Right. I just, you know? I like to keep. You keep your dead time going. alive, yeah. which is amazing. You know, it's like, no, it seems like there's always a new thing and you take advantage of. of well, this, and my daughter space. has gotten bitten by the cosplay bug, I think, because she just did something recently. Um, I don't know if you know Five Nights at Freddy's. I do not. It is a video game. That's creepy, and it's like if the animatronics at Chuck E. Cheese like came to life at night, kind of a thing. Um, and so wait a minute. Uh, oh, go finish your story, and then I. Get, so she did. <laughs> no she did for um, a talent show at school. A group of them sang the song from the video game as the characters. All and the girls so, knew this, or did she have to teach it? No, it was. There were several. Okay. There was some. Um, there was like five of them, and they were all really into the game, and so they all came up with it. So I helped her build her costume, uh-huh. and uh, she looked adorable. She was like this purple bunny thing, and at the end of it, she was like, so I want to do another costume and maybe go to a convention with you. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, you're starting so young of, like, of, like, feeling that, like, because she was, like, full, she was, like, wigged and had accessories and, like, ears and we had painted her face and shit. Yeah, it was. You have to send me some pics and we'll, we'll, we'll slap them on. very cute. Yeah, she was very cute about so it. So what does Sarah Moore want next? What do you want? I mean. Oh, you, man. You know, you, 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 you're, you've got the, you're jonesing. To, mm-hmm. to get another Gamer Chick series I do. up and running, another I another season. I right? actually wrote a short okay. for it that is all set in the fantasy world for nice. Gamer Chick, and I would love to shoot that. Oh, wait, it's, it's, like a, it's, it's, it's Gamer Chick, but it's just... But it's just fantasy. That is a great idea. That and is it's a like, great idea. It's like a... Th- it would probably be like 30 minutes long, but yeah. we would be able to really like dive into stuff that we don't get to get into in the show. Oh, that is awesome. So that yeah. is the next thing that I would really love to do, but what a creative way to, to, to shake it up and change it up after, you know, a handful of And it of would seasons. probably like bridge a couple of seasons the oh, way nice. that we did it. So nice. we could like connect to two seasons with it, but it's going to cost much more than we have been operating with sure sure lately. just production costs or... yeah because you know now we've got we've been able to get away with um in the series really not having a ton of like extras in the fantasy world like we've costumed our couple sure. of people that we see on a regular basis and like that's kind of all we need to do but in the fantasy world season four we were able to add like a professional makeup artist who gave us like prosthetics so like i have little fairy ears in season four Mm -hmm. um and like we're gonna need a lot more of those so how do you go about that are you doing a kickstarter or are you just kind of gonna figure it out kind of take that that's in the drawing board it's yeah that's that's sort of like something that i would love to happen sometime soon but i but in the meantime then the the realistic what i can do next week what is sarah Moore up to I don't, I've been working so much. I kind of just want to like take a bath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Good. Just Good, wanna, man. I want to take a bath and like have like a hard cider and just like sit down yeah. for a few minutes. Um, Cause I also work. So I, I currently am working. I have shoots coming up like in indie film shoots. Okay. And then I, I also work as the princess thing on the weekends. Right. And then I also pose for an art class. I do that like two times a week. Oh, right. You mentioned that. Like, where where do you do that I at? I do that at South Suburban College. And it's an actual, like, I, I started at, like, are you, are you like, oh, I'm a princess here? Or are you like, no, I'm naked? No, I'm naked. Every time? Mm-hmm. How do, 
<laughs> okay, I have to ask. Does did somebody? Did you? How did you get that? Tell me it wasn't through Gamer Chick because no, then it's it was creepy. Not through Gamer like, Chick. Oh, I actually, way. I've been posing for art classes for like sixteen years. Where did that even? What you've been like naked in front of people for sixteen years? Yeah. How did that? How did that happen? So I went away to school. Okay. And I went to a liberal arts college. And there's a lot of art there. <laughs> and I didn't, as a freshman, you don't generally get cast in like main stages that the school does. I hope there's like a credit thing. Like, okay, you know what? This <laughs> class is no, free, but paid. you have to be. Oh, you get paid. Okay. Yeah, you get paid. So I ended up going, like I didn't have, I didn't get cast in something that first semester. Wait, where is the current place at? South Suburban. <laughs> so, so you're telling me how many, how many, how long have you, have you done it at South Suburban? Um, this is the first class that I've posed at South Suburban. For. Have you, have you already done one or? Yeah, I've done a couple. How already. many people Three, in the class? Twelve. If you had to guess. Twelve or fifteen, something like mm. that. All right, and yeah. it's, it's but it's been um, the same semester or it's been a few different classes, different groups of people. Same. Same class. So not so, so the same twelve one, people. Yeah, for this. So right now, semester. littered around this city. A dozen people. There are just there are there are naked pictures yep. of you just all over the place. Yep, sketches. Wow. Do you now? Do you just walk up kind of all bare butted and you're like you know, and peeking? So, like, so well, let's see. So what I have you're a doing. robe. Okay. Um, that's very comfortable. It's actually my husband's robe. I stole it from him, mm-hmm. um, and I've been using it for years when I go and pose. Um, but I, I started posing in college when I was like 18, and then um, and my dad is an artist, and so when I told my parents, so it was like. It. You know, whatever. How hard was it that first day? Terrifying. Okay. Terrifying. Well, what makes you, but forget forget the first day, what makes you able to say yes before the first day? Like, were you like, oh, crap? Or were I, you like, no, when? Okay, I'll know, try this. I did you know, the it's like, it's hot. I'd like to be aired out. It, it was a, it was like a, well, I did, like, I didn't get cast in anything. The cast list had just gone up and I like turned and next to it was like this thing that was like, we're looking for models. And I was like, you know, screw it. I'm going to do it. And does Let's it say go. nude in the... Oh, yeah. Like, they want you to know. All right. Like, you're going to okay. be naked. So that's and so I went in and I met the professor and I, um, and they were like, okay, if you're not, if you don't feel comfortable with it, then we're, don't do it. But sure. this is what we need. And then my advisor down at school had actually, she had been posing for life drawing classes for like 30 years. Mm-hmm. And so I went to talk to her and she was like, this is what you can expect. And it's really professional and it's a really comfortable environment here. <laughs> and if you're not... If you get in there and you feel at all uncomfortable ever, just stop. Like, no one's forcing you to do it. Sure. And the first day was really scary. Because, like, you go in and I was in a robe or something. He was like, all right, go ahead and drop your robe. And, like... So everyone's there. And do you were, greet? Do you, or do you, they like... They were upperclassmen. Okay. And so they had... It's not like this is They'd the first one that they before. had ever yeah. drawn, you know? Oh, yeah. So like they, even in life. Even in... <laughs> well, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, but wait, wait. When you walk in, are you, like... Uh, hello, everybody. Hi, hi. Like, or do, are you not really engaging them? Um, I yeah. didn't. I mean, I'm sure you're not shaking them at hands first. Like okay. the for, at the begin, like yeah. When I first started posing, I wasn't super. Did you have a cocktail that. before doing this? Like, I did not. You know what? In? It was really scary, but it forces you to become comfortable with your body, kind of instantaneously. Sure. Um. And so by like the end of the semester, it, it, like. You're like, Woo! It, was like, it was like I wasn't even coming in yeah. with my robe closed. You were just, because, you were just like, walking whatever. in naked. Because you were actually walking to the building yeah, naked. You were so comfortable. Seen, you're like, you Psst. guys have all seen yeah, me naked. Here I am. Um, you're driving to the to the, <laughs> the class whatever. just butt naked. But then I also got, you know, and then I, I, so I did it all through school, and then I left school and um, took a mini break from doing it, and then I started again because there was an art gallery in downtown Highland and they were teaching classes and um, I went and did that. You've been naked in Highland, Indiana? I have. Wow, man. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's like a kind of a bare butt tour. It is. On. It is all over the place. And then I, I posed at IUN and I posed at, and so now I'm posing at South Suburban and I, um, yeah. I, now it's I, nothing then. Now it's just like. You know, it's, it's interesting because I have found that the artists are generally much more uncomfortable than I am at this point. Mm-hmm. Like the students, like a, a regular artist, like an artist artist is not 
uncomfortable and I've posed for have you ever been tempted just to like write the words hello on your belly <laughs> just like or just <laughs> <do you> stuff? <laughs> just um, the word hey on one boob and sailor on the other <laughs> nothing like that <laughs> that would no? be amazing um I actually think it's really funny that I get a lot of apologies from the from the students who are driving. What do they apologize well, for? I, for the work or for for the work? I'm looking at you for the work. Like we saw, because I'll, I'll you get breaks because your body gets really tired because sure. you have to be so still. Is it? Is it? Are you more or less just? Is it an awkward position? Or, or is it just, you know, I mean, is it just, I mean, do they pose you in something that's kind of hard to hold? I generally get or do to they pose look? myself. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and I, since I've been doing it for so long, I kind of know what What's I co- can and cannot do. Because how long is the, like, a session? How long are you sitting still? Well, the class is three and a half hours. Shit. And so um, I get a break about every 30 minutes. So I'll be in a position for 30 minutes and then I'll get up. And jump. Oh, I mean, so some, one time, like, a girl can be like... She just like stood there the whole time so, naked, yeah, and it's okay. You would think that that would be, but like yeah. if you think about how many micro adjustments that you make during the oh, course of sitting there, you cannot, you cannot make them. Yeah. So it can get, and like, so you'd be like a good I, sniper. Yeah, and you want to, you want to be able to like be in an interesting position for them to draw, and so. So what would interesting like? I guess it's hard. Well, you need to, to create translate that for the podcast but. angles. Mm-hmm. And like negative space, but you have to balance that out with like the fact that you have to hold it for a really long time. When's the next um, um, naked time? Naked class? time. Um, I, I pose on Mondays and Wednesdays. Oh, it's this is ongoing. Like you have summers off, or uh, well, this this class goes until April. I'll need proof, but I'll buy you brunch if you go in with your gamer chick ears on. <laughs> with my ears on? Yes, I do have, have extra ears at yeah. home. That would be great. I bet walk, the artist would love that, you know, actually. Walking with your ears on. He would think that would be, you know. he would think that was rad, like to mm. give them an extra But you're such video. a go-getter, like you're, you're not you're not tempted <laughs> to just like put gamer chick on it's one butt like, cheek. Just like stamp you know, the website yeah, on Yeah, just, you know, one ass cheek has watch do, and the other one gamer chick watch gamer I actually chick. do have a tattoo on my lower back. I have like a, the ohm on my, like at the base of my spine. And so people, that's in all the drawings when they sketch me. Oh, yeah, because sometimes I, 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 you're like dead center in the room. Yeah. So then the people behind you are drawing something. To, they're not all. That. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. That What a crazy gig. It's super. Do you feel yeah. like, okay, I have to stay fit because people see me naked? Or no, it's art. You don't care. You're just like, you know what? I, you know, I had an artist tell me like, and maybe I just clung to this, but I had an artist tell me that when they're le- when people are learning to draw they need to learn how to draw every kind of body so sure. it's not like yeah. if you don't have a perfect body that you can't be here and so he was like don't feel like you need to kill yourself at the gym yeah if you're gonna come in here because and like don't feel like you need to shave your legs because whatever like just come in and just be how you are yeah. you know so doesn't that make you want to at least like really let it out there and come in with one hairy leg this session one, just like i you know what i actually was my ha- my legs were super hairy the last time i went because because it, <laughs> it was so cold outside nice. that i was like i'm not like i'm i'm gonna use that for extra yeah. warmth yeah, this is real freezing. boys this is real and, and is like, it, what's the ratio, uh, boys to girls in the class? It's about and, half and half. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like this. But so, ladies and gentlemen, you could find her completely clothed <laughs> during most scenes of Gamer Chick until we get to the fantastical scenes, in which case, you know, there's a little bit of skin showing. There's a little bit of you know, ab that's, peaking. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like the middle ground. And then enroll in the right class, you'll see her completely naked. So they in can the see buff. They can see you in all different levels. Yeah, you know, not even just artistically. It's also really but interesting physically. because compliments that you get from an artist much oh, different. Like you have nice lines or yeah, something, right? Well, yeah. Well, um, uh, flowing musculature is something that I heard. Whoa. Like, do you have beautiful flowing musculature? And like, that's not something that you can work into like casual conversation yeah. when you're trying to like pick somebody up. Like, no. hey, look at that <laughs> flowing musculature you got there. That's no, fun. like in, in a bar, that sounds like someone's having a bad bowel movement. Right? Yeah, no, right? that doesn't sound no, sexy at all. it's not good. But, I, but in the context of, you know, of an art class, it sounds it pretty sounds impressive. It's perfect, right. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, wonder, but yeah. And, and also one that he said at the last one, which made me laugh, is he pointed out he was like, well, she's got really good angles. Like, look at her gorgeous pelvic bone. And I was pelvic like, pelvic bone. What a strange wow. world I live in. That That's this is the odd. kind of thing that I get. <laughs> 
Oh, man. But it's good for your self-esteem because you come out of there being like, I am hot. (laughs) Like, I've got all of these great, amazing... musculature is flowing. amazing. Now you're going to... I've got to buy some shirts that just show my pelvic bone. Show the pelvic bone. Pelvic bone. Yeah, man. Yeah. Those pelvic bone bikini Mm, line that you're going to come out with. It's just such a strange... Have you guys seen the gamer chick pelvic bone bikini line? So good. Well... Um, I, I like now I need to see everything. I can't wait. No, no, I don't mean you physically. I mean, I need to see all these pieces that are yeah, going to be happening. A lot of stuff going yeah. on, and then I need to have you back on for like some geek chat because we've only like scratched the surface of all that comic book stuff. So much iceberg underneath that. So ser- we have a lot. I'll, I'll, we're, there it's going to, you know, maybe for like when Avengers two comes out, cause yes. that's right around the corner and all that. But I think the basic thing we walked around uh, like away with from that portion was Hey, DC, figure it out. Mm-hmm. Watch Marvel. Well, you know, I think what they need to do is just cast me in something. You would make a... Well, you know, there's going to... I, I think in comic book land, Thor became a female now. He I did. He became a lady. Yeah, but again, it's lady all Thor. laid out there just... But like, I have I have sort of a deep obsession with Wonder Woman. and well, She's going to be in there. But she... I, I can't play Wonder Woman because I'm 5'3". And she's an Amazon. You know, they change everything. In the comic books, Wolverine is 5'2". I know. He's this little, tiny, spunky guy. And you know, but Hugh Jackman kills it, by the way. But, but, like, but it would it'd be very interesting to see that character who everybody like calls Half Pint in the comic books. Right. I mean, come on. That yeah. would be very cool to well, see. Well, I actually, I just got cast in a, a, like a superhero spoof, um, superhero poker showdown. Which is like... You need to create... Where, where, wait a minute. Before you get into this, because this is like project number 12. Hey, there's a lot. You, is, there, is it just social media? Is it just Facebook? Like There needs to be a way for you to list everything that you're doing on, in one place, like yeah. a website or something. Um, I, have, is there something... I have my actor page on Facebook. Okay. And I also have um, a Twitter account that I tweet about. So how, how would... Is, I guess Facebook, they're just looking for Sarah Moore. Actor Sarah Moore. And my... Hey, my profile picture is me with a pink wig in comic book makeup. Okay, so remember that, folks, you know, because this is, there's a lot going <laughs> on. There's, stuff. I mean, the the small roles, the big roles, there's, there's <laughs> so just so cool. much, man. I mean, we couldn't even get, you, you would like be a three-hour episode, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously, and just going back, like, to the beginning, like, uh, before all of this, because uh, you're so well versed in geekdom, <laughs> so on top much, of everything, I'm so much geek. There's so much geek, yet you know the actress, you know the 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 nudist, <laughs> the every, everything. Uh, where did the geek come from? I you think know, it's kind of always been there. I mean, but what happened? Was somebody a gamer growing up, or what? How does a girl? My brother was okay. Mm-hmm. Because my brother played Dungeons and Dragons when we were growing up, and now actually he and I do um, a a game over roll 20 so like over the internet mm-hmm. um we have a like a D and and then where did the thing. comic book thing come from because you said that you know she said well, this off the is, mic that she reads fables yeah, i do but but that's fine but you also know i mean you're talking to me about you know <laughs> iron man captain america spider-man batman yeah. like you know every like how did that happen my dad is a is an artist and my grandfather was a cartoonist and so we just sort of had like art in all of its forms around okay. my house growing up um all right i think i just kind of fell into it really because you're the real deal i can i can i can spot a phony a mile away <laughs> all of the geek. and and talking to you you're like the real you know yeah, and it, another thing i i like i said while we were reheating our coffee <laughs> um it's either I, I only run into like hardcore gamers or comic book. Because mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily gamer guy. In fact, we'll have a hang and I'll just ask you some game. Maybe I should... You should count. Yeah. We should like break your gaming cherry. Let's do that. Yeah. I, I would be down. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm actually more interested in what you guys present in the show. Like the, the kind of sitting down. Yeah, yeah. Like I've At never table. done that. So good. It's I'm my very favorite intimidated kinds. talking about it right now. So yeah, it, for non-gamers out there, you say that's like the cool... You know, a good, just, a good fun bonding thing. You know, thing. part of it, for a, a big par- portion of it, of course, is telling the story with this, with this dice and, and being in this world and being mm-hmm. able to pick your things. But also, like, it's a social thing. Like, these people at the table are such good friends of mine. And sometimes this is the only time that I get to see them. Have you had somebody who's, like, 
nowhere near the gamer, like complete cherry popped, and then they come in. Oh, yeah. I, I actually, for a long time, I joked that I was the marijuana of gaming because okay. I would bring, because I, I was so vocal about how much I loved it and how I didn't really give a shit if other people thought it was weird. Yeah. Like, this is my thing and I like it. And I would have people, especially my like girlfriends, would come up to me and be like, hey, so. I've been wanting to try this, but like, it's really intimidating because all of my guy friends have been doing it for like ever. And I feel stupid because I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, no, don't feel stupid. Come over. And like, oh. you know, so I actually have um, two groups now that are all women that wow. game. And they're in it. Yeah. And so we like rotate who is the game master. It, it seems like a nice bridge between somebody like me who likes, you know, the comic books and stuff to just go in. And I just like the you whole know, it's, fantastic. It's I'm a huge acting, Star Wars buff. It's as acting well. with dice. And oh, so that's if you're cool. interested in, in acting, yeah. it's, that's improv, but it's sort of guided that improv. That is primarily what I love yeah. is improv. Yeah. And, um, and you can find like. Like, people love Dungeons and Dragons. I know that a lot of people think of just that as like, well, I'm going to sit down with an RPG and it's Dungeons and Dragons. But there's Star Wars and there's Serenity and there's Supernatural and there's. A huge Serenity um, fan, too, by the yeah, way. Man. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Um, we, we ran a Serenity campaign for about two years like once a week for two years our wow. characters got so overpowered a that campaign. like they had see to, like, that sounds so cool even the wording i don't yeah. i'm so out of the all right i i'm, I'm probably good, gonna man. let you I'll, I'll have to report to everybody how it works out but i'll maybe that'll be we're gonna actually have to have a regular hang because i want to geek out with you yes you know um one of our ones that we're doing do right now too. man um is Atomic Robo, which is based <laughs> on um, a comic book, which is it's amazing. So weird. Atomic Robo is a robot built by Nikola Tesla okay. in the story, and he is like government agents, and he like goes in when they can't send anybody else in to fix stuff. And so it's like this sort of pulp adventure, but it can span time and it can be at like whenever you want because he's a robot and he lasts forever. And uh, we're doing a campaign of that right now, and I'm like a ninja kind of i always play a rogue i always sometimes say a i'm not, I'm not kind gonna, of yeah she's like a thief mercenary person she hides in a lot of air ducts i <laughs> okay. like i just i i always go i'm not gonna play a rogue i'm gonna do something different and i should just embrace it because i always end up playing a rogue i'm like i'm the sneaky one that, that disappears into the night and then stabs you in the back and steals all your shit and Aww, that's my job sweet sweet girl yeah because I'm, I'm small and tiny and i that's what i do in all every right. game and i'm like i just should own that i should just own it well that's I i'm glad you rogue. do well, God, I did you have fun? I this did. Is like, I had a delightful time. Again, you didn't know. You, it's hard to like decide. You know, see what you're getting into. But yeah, we're just gonna chat. I hit all my projects. Uh huh. So, yeah, so from a marketing standpoint, I, you know, you I did feel, what you needed I to do. I feel good. I feel like I represented everything that cool. um, that I should. I ate cake. I geeked I, out about comic books. We got we got like, to hang. This is a hang. This is good stuff. This whole thing man. is a hang. This um, well. People find her. Yeah, um, man. I mean, there's not much she doesn't do at this point. <laughs> it's so, true. like, writer, creator, actress, princess nudist. Mm -hmm. Now, princess nudist is not one word. No, <laughs> so separate. You know. There's a comma. Yeah. So, but seriously, uh, find Sarah Moore, man. Uh, you're you're charming. You're a hard Ooh, worker, yeah. and that's like the best combination. Like a passionate, charming, hard worker who seems to want to look for the next big thing for your heart. But also, you're so interested in in the improvement of the process. Yeah, and I just you, you like having things, fun, man. The whole, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. I mean, you. it's funny to say that, but I I knew you before you were doing all these things. That you know, and I I, I I've met a lot of people similar to you. Like, oh, I'm going to be working on this thing, you know, and I I don't know where they are now. I right. I, I haven't seen product from a lot of them, and to see. Just you, you go from, you know, A to M. Somebody else at my door. I'm not even. It's a party yeah, today. But I'm really. It's just been a blast. So people, Sarah Moore, Yay. find her. Find me. Find her online. I'm around. Gamer Chick Show. This has been a party. Um, I'm so happy you did this. I'm so happy you had fun. We're going to have her back for a geek show. But yes. um, yeah, just enjoy yourselves. You're going to see a great process. If you want to know about 
production and moving forward with a production. You've heard her tell the tale, but now, you know, watch it. Watch it unfold. Watch it happen because it's a lot of fun. Find her on social media. And uh, what you, is the company called again? Romeo? Romeo's Faux. Romeo's Faux. Studios. Just do it, people. Do it. So I hope you guys have had a good time. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your month. Enjoy your week. It was nice talking to you, Sarah. It's nice talking to you. All right. Well, go out and find your smile, folks. Bye-bye. Bye. Welcome to my life so far You'd think by now I'd be a star I may be long-winded, but hey There's just so much I have to say Maybe lick your lips when you're hungry Maybe drop your head when you're sorry Maybe shake a bit when you're worried